Boom. What's up, fam? Anthony Johnson here today, co-founder of the Redman Group, founder of 21 Studios, 21 Convention, 22 Convention, 21 University, 10,000 other things on the internet. And today I got with me, uh, you know, special guest, Pat, Ge uh, Pat Stebman, excuse me, returning guest to the show, alumni speaker of 21 Summit, 21 Convention, and the 22 Convention. He's been on the Redman Group several times before. Uh, you can go and search on 21 Studios or the Redman Group channels. Just search Pat Stebman in the channel. You'll pull up all his speeches, interviews I've done with the previously, podcast, stuff like that. Awesome guy. And before we get into today's show, I want to mention too, though, you'll see that uh, we got to pull this up. We'll pull it up in a minute. But anyway, he's America's most wanted dating coach. And we'll look at some basics of why that is. Uh, it's my title. I thought, I thought it was very funny, very accurate to some things that have happened in his life, unfortunately. But also, I want to show you guys that uh, today's show is sponsored by the this brand new hat, Make Men Alpha Again. I'll be launching it later today on the 21 store. Uh, it's going to be fucking awesome. You should get it. So you can go to the 21store.com, support the show, support the channel. You can also check out uh, 21studios.com. Just hit 21 store and I'll pull you right to it. Got all our hats there. Make women great again. Make women pregnant again. Make men strong again. Make women cook again. Make women virgins again. Toxic masculinity. All your fan favorites. Uh, the fucking dope. Wear it in public. It pisses people off, particularly uh, feminists and shit like that. Like I said, Pat is pretty famous uh, for some stuff that happened uh, in 2021, last year, all this crap. It had uh, mainstream news, New York Post, uh, NBC News, stuff like that. Uh, you know, dating strategists busted by the FBI. Uh, in my opinion, you know, it's a bunch of nonsense, but it has been amazing to see this stuff hit the news and the fake news media's fervor to attack patriotic Americans. As far as Pat uh, and his actual career and what he does, you can find him at patstedman.com. Uh, he has a bunch of uh, content here, a blog that's awesome, a newsletter that's even better. You should definitely join it. He does one-on-one -on -one coaching, which I've done myself with him. He's like one of the only people in the world I've ever actually paid coaching for. The guy is that fucking good, that fucking dope. He also has a master class that's pretty cool. You can check that out on his site at this button right here, this big orange thing. And you should definitely check it out. It's super dope. I've heard a lot of good things about it. And uh, I think you'll like it a lot. Anyway, without further ado, and selling you guys a bunch of hats to support the show, please welcome to the show, Mr. Pat Stebman. What's up, bro? How's it going, Anthony? It's good to see you, man. Doing yeah, you too, man. Welcome back to the show. It's been a little while. Um, I think since last year, probably, I've probably even had you in the show in probably six to nine months, something like that. It's yeah, good to have you back. Yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah. So, man, what's new with you? It uh, looks like at minimum, you got your website uh, completely revamped, brand new. Uh, yeah. What, what else is new? <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're gradually professionalizing my business. You know, I, I've run a successful business, but um, as my sort of business coach has told me, like unnecessarily playing the game on hard, <laughs> just not really having, it's been very bespoke um, word of mouth. And we've, we've now started to get things more um, set up for expansion, hmm. which is great. And so, yeah, finally, you know, the website's fixed after being a total dilapidated mess. You know, the thing is like the content was always good, but yeah. <laughs> the presentation and the marketing, not so much. So we're doing better with that now. Yeah, dude, it looks super dope. Like hundred percent professional, like way better than, uh, I guess the one you had before. I know it is dude. You have an old WordPress site that's been sitting around for 10 years and you keep posting blogs on it and shit. I know the, the tech guy was like, what on earth? <laughs> like, like the site was barely functioning. Yep. So yeah, no, it's good. But aside from that, you know, I got a, I got a daughter. Um, yeah. You know, we're just uh, looking and, you know, looking down, down the line to keep expanding the family, you know, yeah. pump out those babies. So, Polish babies, Polskas. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. My wife's Polish is what he's uh, referring to. For the I actually audience. forgot to mention this, that like, you know, you're this chat alpha male patriarch and your husband and a father and it's pretty dope. And your wife's beautiful. She's not a fat old pig like a lot of Manister wives, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. I love it. You know, it's it's results in real life. Like you have this beautiful wife, makes be beautiful babies and stuff. She's very feminine, very sweet. And uh, we're, we're in a I wanted to mention that, too. Actually, let me, let me get this out of the way that you're a pioneer. In my view, you deserve like a presidential medal of integrity and truth uh, for going after intellectual fraud in the manosphere before even I did. And I was also like one of the first. And I think that's one of the most important things you've done is not only coach men and help men, you know, discover a lot of great ideas about dating and relationships 
and avoid a lot of toxic negativity, but you've actually exposed and been on the offense for guys who are charlatans and don't mean well, and they're predators and frauds and shit like that. And you were doing it back in like 2016, 2017, like in the olden days at this point. Yeah. Just for people who are, I know that, you know, like the red man group and everything is more of a YouTube sort of business. Um, yeah. But on Twitter, the you kind of had the manosphere that was brought on the Twitter from Mike Cernovich. And then everything was kind of pulled in with the 2016 election. When Mike went pretty much full time in the politics, there was a big vacuum that was created. And uh, Rolo filled that vacuum. And so suddenly all the manosphere content like started to revolve around Rolo. And I, I, you know, I kept an open mind. Like I didn't, I, I didn't just dismiss it out of hand. And I, you know, engaged with the article, you know, I, I read his book, I read some of, you know, his posts and um, I came to the conclusion by midway through 2017 that this stuff was flawed. And I addressed it initially in a, you know, constructive, proactive way saying, Hey, you know, this isn't, this isn't really good for men or women. Um, Cause like this is my perspective on it is that what Rolo does is really f fuels feminism. It's he's the inverse of feminism. Hmm. It doesn't create a positive constructive pathway for men to be leaders, to be patriarchs. Right. It's really just a bunch of whiny shit. Yeah. And it's, it actually, the subtext of it is that women are, are the, problem and that men are like oppressed by women and it creates this oppression loop so anyway but i you know i initially i didn't i i was trying to be constructive like hey you know let's expand on this idea maybe we take it this direction and rather than have any sort of good faith engagement with the arguments which were very well received by a lot of people because it was refreshing um i was labeled purple pill right oh. um which I didn't your know. Pa that. Your yeah, patient yeah. zero of the purple pill. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so anyway, we started to have a lot of back and forth arguments and whatnot and um, really humiliated him over yeah. and over and over again until finally that led to me being blocked at the very end of 2017. He, he refused to be in a debate. People, he, you know, he said, well, you know, like people kept saying you guys should have a debate and i was like yeah let's do it set it up well he and he is the science though he's the science you can't argue with science, science. Don't, don't you yeah. understand you don't understand he's the science bro no alexander cortez offered to moderate and he was very neutral during this yeah. whole thing at that time yeah. and um yeah and rollo rollo refused to do it and you know look it all speaks for itself gradually the consciousness changed i know anthony really made a big push with that purifying you know a, a jihad on <laughs> in the manosphere against this, this <laughs> and thanks it, thanks man and you know look and I, I i think everybody's better for it obviously yeah. they still lurk but like vermin they've crawled to their little corners yeah. and the light continues to sanitize them so we just keep spreading more light into not only the the weakness of the ideas but simply the the hypocrisy of the individuals involved. Yeah. Um, and, and those two things, of course, always go together. You don't have weak ideas and strong men. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't actually happen. These are guys are all fucking losers. And <laughs> the reality is that if you met any of them in real life, like a lot of guys see, see some bravado behind the screen and they think, oh, wow, these guys are like, these guys are the real deal. They're real alpha. Like if you get in the presence of these people, they can't maintain eye contact. Yep. Um, they have a really squirmy attitude to them. Slimy, and, slimy. Yeah, slimy attitude. Yeah. So the Ryan, the rhinestones and the and Rollery, you know, Rollery Tomaso is the same way. Yeah. I've heard women just who met him describe him as an alien. Like the minute the minute he left the room, like it's that bad. And yeah. Well, it's it's just it's just it's insane how different it is versus the online caricature that these people are led to believe is true. It's just like politicians like that are, you know, doing lines of Coke and banging gay hookers like that uh, governor dude. What's his name? Uh, Andrew Gillum. Yeah. And then, but then the public facing persona is family man. I'm a good father. And it's like the, the two worlds are complete opposites. Yeah. It's, it's an inversion. 
and you know without going into the sort of moral stuff evil you know bad people tend to be it tends to be a complete inversion you know they pretend to be one thing when they're when they're the complete opposite um and, and yeah you bring up a really good point here which is that even aside from you know how these people are as men right um when what's what's really jarring i mean these are people who are talking about women mm-hmm. but do they actually even do well with women no zero i mean women are completely unattracted to them repulsed so, repulsed yeah yeah repulsed yeah. that's exactly right and so when women are repulsed by a guy why are you listening to him on advice yeah anyway <clears throat> unfortunately a lot of the guys who follow these charlatans are really not looking to improve with women anyway they're just looking for someone who's going to validate their experience as a victim yeah and so you know soothe their emotions kind of pet them almost like a dog or something like it's you're a beta loser it's okay you can stay a beta loser like just take this this fake red pill and you can feel better about being a beta loser it, it's exactly right and and this is why i bring it back to the point that they are really feminists in the same sense for men mm-hmm. they're feminists for men because what do feminists do i mean feminists do the same shit with women they tell women it's okay to be fat ugly uh, not take care of yourself have a bad attitude and that it's not you know your fault yeah. it's like no of course it's your fault <laughs> yeah yeah well it's i mean i i put it as um uh, it's kind of like eating like in uh nutrition like yeah. there's all these stupid fucking lies that have been going around a lot of which have been propped up by the government the food pyramid like all this crap and school lunches for kids and this is all sorts of nonsense that's been the government's been pushing out and huge corporations that are invested in corn and soy and wheat have put out for decades. And as a young American, you're not responsible for that shit uh, being put out, but you're responsible for eating the poison. And it's your responsibility to stop eating this poison, whether it's, you know, information or it's actually like going into your mouth. And so if you're fat fuck, like ultimately it's your fault, even if you're not responsible for the propagation of the lies and the pushing of it. Like feminism too. Like I'm not responsible for feminism at 33 years old being this insane shit show. Most of my adult life, by far, I pushed against it, but I'm still responsible for you know rejecting these like stupid ideas that, like the things you talk about in your newsletter. Uh, you know, men oneitis and this kind of like fairy tale bullshit that men believe about relationships and women are just angels. There's no darker yeah. side to women. Mm-hmm. So it's like Sean Smith's been going against. Uh, he's been criticizing the red pill more openly in the past few months saying there's some good ideas and utility to it and the real red pill, not the roll up pill, which is different, sure. but like the actual red pill community that you're familiar with in me. But also there's a lot of like really toxic fucking shit in it. And so men need to be much more discerning for uh, sifting through this stuff. Well, I, I was going to say D, DDJ too, or uh, someone, you know, I think uh, he's been mm-hmm. on the show a lot. Yeah. He calls it the, the red pill blind spot, mm-hmm. basically because in the manosphere and whether it's MGTOW or the red pill community or whatever, because they push against the mainstream merit of the feminism, which is like overtly fucking retarded, uh, people, men will, are much more prone to automatically, like very automated, like low quality thinking, believing whatever these charlatans say, just because they're correct and pushing against feminism. And it's this, it's like this cognitive laziness to just accept whatever is against the mainstream. And it's like, you need to be more, you need to be a lot more thoughtful than that. than just like, this guy says feminism sucks. He must be legit. Like, come on, man. Well, you know it, how they, we say in politics today that with the parties, it's two wings of the same bird. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing with the red pill and feminism. Unfortunately, a lot of guys are stupid, um, or at least they need more, they need to develop their discernment more. And so it's exactly as you say, it's, it's, it's no different than you have some, you know, conservative guy who believes you know you have you have some total charlatan in politics that goes like lindsey graham who says yeah. you know, like i support america i'm you know the left is spends too much money it's like you know okay wow i support that that means he's a good guy it's like no it doesn't mean that yeah. they're selling you their own version of bullshit and you get caught in this paradigm and that actually fuels it that's why you know if we are going to defeat feminism you have to actually rise above feminism yeah. You, can't, you can't meet it at its same level of victimization. Um, yeah. But, you know, look, it, it's it's also just a matter of the kind of people it attracts, though. I, I do think that as we spread more and more light, we'll, we'll minimize, we'll pull more and more guys away from it. 
but the reality is that if you have someone like Rianne St Stone, I mean, Rianne, Rianne has an extremely low IQ. Really? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't, when I would have arguments with Rianne, it was very difficult to even, he, he, he didn't have the reading comprehension. To let's, be just call him, let's just call him Rihanna, Rihanna Stone. Yeah, Rihanna Stone. I mean, he didn't have the reading comprehension to be able to actually, so it's like you'd respond and then he, he would, it was like you're at the DMV. Yeah. And, and you explain that, you know, this is an identification. They say, well, no, it's, no, it's not because of this, you know, like yeah. they can't read the piece of paper. They don't understand it. Like that was, that's how it is with Rihanna. So, I mean, you know, Rihanna, right? So if, if you're going to follow someone like that, you have to be even stupider. So, so hang on. I want to clarify. You're claiming, and I support this claim if I'm accurate here, Rihanna Stone is the DMV of the Manosphere. He's a DMV of the Manosphere. 100%. Okay. I love it. 100%. I love it. I yeah. love it. <laughs> Sub 90 IQ. No question about it. Yeah. He's, um, he's like that in real life. Like he's kind of retarded. And uh, he's, uh, he told me his girlfriend or his wife, uh, I think she became the, his like piggy wife. Uh, she, she's, he said she was a coquette at a party is how I met her. There she was, like, that's literally what he told me on the Redman group one time. So it's like these guys and he wiped her up for some reason. I guess I had true love is true love or whatever. I'm not going to get in the way of mar marrying a cokehead, but I will make fun of it. Mm -hmm. And she's also very overweight and stuff like that. She's not as big as uh, the official Miss Piggy of the Manosphere, but... It's it's very consistent, like you're saying. These dudes are dumb or hypocrites or fraudulent. And then if you look at you know their wives and girlfriends in real life, the women run them, and then they're all fat and they're all usually really old. Yeah. And it's every time. I mean, it's 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 that retarded. Uh, you know, you have the single mom experts and all this kind of shit. But yeah, I mean, I I, I make <clears> that <throat> comment about Rian though, just almost actually actually to give him a little bit of a pass. Like I, I don't think he even understands enough to be able to think beyond that sort of black and white thing. Rolo is not stupid. Yeah. Rolo isn't stupid. I mean, so he's just disingenuous. That's the, that's the I think thing. Rolo is also like mentally ill. Like, I mean it, yeah, he's been yeah. raving, he's been ranting and raving lately about pathological personalities verbatim. There's one video where he bitched, he, he was bitching about me for like two hours just recently. And he probably said pathological personality like 50 to a hundred times. And it's like, this is such overt projection of yeah, someone yeah. who is a, per a pathological personality you need like extensive one-on-one -on -one therapy with an actual clinical psychologist. You're clearly a fucking narcissist. You're never wrong. You can't, you won't debate anybody who thinks that you're wrong, which is like the def the definition of an honest debate. Duh. Yeah. The few times that he does, he's debated um, Dr. Sean Smith and Stefan Molyneux. They both ran circles around him and basically made him cry. You can see his face in these interviews, actually the, the physiology of it. He, he gets more and more butthurt like every 10 minutes. You can see like, he just tightens up and gets all fucking mm -hmm. pissy because he's like a little girl who's like losing this debate and he can't handle it. He can't just say, oh, I was wrong about that. Or let me look more into that because I'm getting, I'm going to double back on what I think because maybe this guy has a point. There's just none of that. Yeah. So peak, peak retard. <laughs> yeah. And you know, what's sad too is because the red pill got quarantined on Reddit. It used to be a lot more diversity of ideas and opinions. There's a lot of guys who hated Rolo long before Mary, me or you had any problems with them. And mm -hmm. because Reddit, as a big tech kind of company, you know, quarantined it, it really like castrated it. It cut mm -hmm. off all the membership and the viewing. It just fucked it all up. It's basically like deleting it or banning it. Sure, sure. And uh, it's Rolo has been trying to push hardcore on YouTube that like he is the red pill. And this is not even remotely accurate. He's always defined it as his own version of the red pill, which is why I call it the Rolo pill, because right. it was dis it was distinct in the manosphere in general and even in the red pill community as being his own thing. And he's been trying to do this switcheroo, this bait and switch on these naive 18 year old kids on YouTube that just soak up whatever they fucking hear. It's really getting bad. Yeah. It's like, uh, we should, we should move on to some other topics, but, uh, just cause I hate the guy, it makes me want to puke just like thinking about him. Cause he's like such a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I completely agree. I completely let's, agree. Let's get back to dating. Let's get back to dating relationships in the manosphere in a minute. Let's actually move on to something more fun, Ukraine and Russia. Mm. Uh, I see like all this. So my view of it, my take, and I want to get yours is like, there's just a lot of hardcore simping for Ukraine. And these people like aren't even remotely thinking about what they're being fed. All the propaganda that we see in the West is like super hardcore one sided. And that to me just screams like scam. Like when the whole fucking narrative, all the neocons come out of the woodwork, all the neoliberals, these limousine liberals, the Lindsey Grahams, the Mitt Romneys, 
uh, all the Democrats, all this garbage. Like they're all pushing the, like Russia is the devil and Ukraine is like this, this and Zelensky is like this knight in shining armor. And it's like, this is not, this is not reality. This is war propaganda in the extreme. And everybody who's been criticizing the government for the past two years or whatever on the Kufid stuff, all of a sudden they just believe everything that they're told. Like it's yeah. the, the, what is it? The Schadenfreude? I can't say it. Uh, Schadenfreude? Yeah, yeah, Schadenfreude. Yeah, I don't know how to fucking pronounce it, but the mental gymnastics people are doing just in the past couple of weeks has been amazing. And even a lot of people who are much more pro-Trump and anti-establishment, anti-deep state, even a lot of those people have been sucked into it. Mm -hmm. And I want to know your your kind of take on it and why you think, if if you can, there's been even more hardcore simping for Ukraine than there was for Kufid, which yeah. is also like retardville, USA. Well, I agree with everything you said. I I'm going to give the audience some context and background because most people don't know any of this information. Uh, and it's very important. In 2014, <clears throat> the US, the CIA, overthrew the democratically elected government of Ukraine. Now, look, I'm not going to pretend that that government was was not corrupt. It was corrupt. Um, but the person who was in power was Yanukovych, who was, you know, who was more aligned towards Russia in the in Ukraine at that time period was really split 50 50 between wanting to be part of the West and wanting to be part of Russia um, or wanting to be integrated with it. It's not it was more a matter of being part of the EU economic zone versus the Eurasian um, economic common, common economic area. So when Yanukovych won again, the CIA, uh, did a color revolution, um, which, you know, was very interesting about that. We had our own attempted color revolution here. And, uh, well, let's just say, I think that people were going to be surprised at, at the levels of similarity between the two things, but we won't get into any more of that. <laughs> um, at any rate, they overthrew the government, and it was actually quite a terrible situation. They had snipers shooting civilians in Kiev. They burned over 40 trade unionists who were protesting against the overthrow of the government alive in Odessa. And in response to this overthrow of the government, you saw throughout southeastern Ukraine in particular, um, not just in uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, in the Donbass, but also in Kharkiv, right? The city that's that's currently under siege right now. They also had their own People's Republic that was formed. And this became, you know, and then of course Russia took Crimea. This became a big thing. The Ukrainian military in 2014 was only about 6,000 men. And so you, these militias were able to, to basically get formulated anyway. Money starts being thrown in from the West to back the U Ukrainian military. The Russians start to back these militias. The one in Kharkov was put down. The two in the Donbass managed to sustain themselves. So what people don't understand, they're saying like, oh, the war, you know, three weeks ago, the war, this war broke out in Ukraine. That's not true. There's been a war for eight years. And the Ukrainians have been shelling Donbass indiscriminately, killing civilians. There's been multiple five figures worth of people who have died in the Donbass. And the Ukrainian government had the audacity just two days ago to post some cheesy, you know, poor civilians being killed in Ukraine. When they dropped cluster munitions in a civilian area, the, the photos they were using were of them killing civilians in the Donbass. OK, yeah. so this is this <clears throat> been going on for a while. So now let's let's fast forward this stuff. And I won't go into some of the more. Um, you know, which I think, frankly, have some credibility, but theories about the bio labs and what exactly was going on in there. But yeah. Ukraine at this point was there's been the corruption has gotten worse and worse. And you know about Biden's involvement with Ukraine, the Clinton's involvement with Ukraine, with Burisma, et cetera. Ukraine, um, there's been massive uh, financial money laundering through Ukraine. Um, and child trafficking, child sex trafficking, you know, Ukrainian girls being shipped all over the world. Um, yeah, they're, they're beautiful, man. I saw a bunch in Poland. I mean, yeah. they're, they're some of the most uh, Ukrainian women and Swedish women are the most beautiful women as a group of every mm -hmm. demographic I've ever seen in my life. And the Ukrainian women are, are basically the biggest source of white sex trafficking in the entire world. Basically. Wow. It's huge. If you go is to, you, is Ukraine the you center to, of uh, corruption? And in, in like the for Western like powers and shit. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I, I can really go down the rabbit hole with people. You know, we everybody talked about those pallets of cash that were shipped from, you know, Trump was talking about this, how Obama gave Iran yeah. all of this cash. And, um, but what's not really talked about is that there was, that was only a few billion dollars. The most of the money, and it was 486 billion, I mean, that's almost half a trillion dollars, was digitally laundered through Ukraine. And so, the the levels and and by the way a lot of this stuff is actually connected to the election fraud i mean it's a whole rabbit hole i can get down all this stuff i, I, I I'll, I'll try to stay on the more practical things from the perspective of, of yeah. russia though right so you have in ukraine after this overthrow of the government um ukraine quite literally has been taken over by nazis the azov battalion which by the way their leader just received the ukrainian um, you know, Medal of Freedom, you know, basically the Hero of Ukraine Award. I saw that. These guys have SS insignia on them, tattooed onto them. Um, they've crucified people alive. And there's overwhelming evidence corroborated over and over and over again that they are using civilians as shields in the war. And look, you may not like Russia. You don't even have to think the Russians are good or that they care about Ukrainians, which I would dispute because in their view, the Ukraine is basically like the southern U.S. It's kind of like you don't really have Russia without the South. It's like the United States had been cut in two after the Cold War if they had lost. It's a kind of similar dynamic for them. But putting aside all that stuff, even just speaking from a completely practical matter, the Russians have no incentive to kill civilians. So when they have this, you know, I'm not saying they haven't killed civilians. Of course they have. It's a war. But in the first two weeks of the war, the Russians killed five. This is by the UN estimates, right? The UN is not Russian estimates. Killed 561 civilians in the first two weeks of the war. We killed 15,000 in Iraq in the first two weeks of the war. So if people are like the shock and awe. Why hasn't Russia taken over all of Ukraine? They're, you know, they can't, they can't move fast enough. Their military is incompetent. I do think that they, they made some tactical mistakes, right? I think that they were expecting less resistance than there was. But fundamentally, people also don't understand the Russian strategy, which is to minimize civilian casualties, which means a much less indiscriminate approach. Yeah. And on top of that, the Russians follow the mindset of Clausewitz, which is that you engage the enemy army. And if you look at how they conducted operations in Syria, they tend to bypass cities. And what they do is they surround the cities and then they create humanitarian corridors. And the idea behind that is, of course, to get civilians out of the cities, but it's actually also to encourage the desertion of regular army units to sneak out with the civilian population. Uh, like, they're actually OK with Ukrainian soldiers deserting. They want Azov, but they don't care about you regular Ukrainian soldiers deserting. I'm just I'm just kind of amazed because I've seen this propaganda that you're um, that you're like referring to here. And it's so fucking obvious and it's so fucking overt. Like, for example, killing civilians, like no shit that happened. It's like even even one person getting killed. I'm sorry that happened. Like, this is not a good thing. But this is what happens when there's an actual conflict going on. And you're right. America went into Iraq and we, we ended up killing between Afghanistan and Iraq, somewhere between half a million and a million civilians got killed. Never mind like war combatants and stuff like America's and yeah. every place that America's gone into for the past 60 years, a shit ton of people fucking die. This is how war is just fuck. I mean, I'm not I'm not even going to excuse that. This is just part of what happens at war, though. And it's like the but the mainstream narrative is, oh, they killed some civilians. Therefore, they're evil. It's like, dude, this is not how fucking real life works. Like it's like it's like propaganda. The propaganda is for like fucking 10 year olds. It's like it's it's that well, retarded. Well, because well, the American public, Western public has been really brought down to the mind of a child. Right. Yeah. They watch Marvel movies <clears throat> and everything is in this sort of okay, you know, who's the hero and who's the villain? And, you know, and, and it's just all caricatures and they can't yeah. think in any sort of realistic terms. The bottom line is that the West was trying to provoke this war with Russia. Russia's terms were extremely, extremely like reasonable. Basically, they wanted Ukraine to be neutral and they wanted guarantees that it wasn't going to join NATO. Yeah. And not only was were neither of those. Oh, and also this. I mean, this is actually huge. Is that the Ukrainian government has banned the use of Russian? So over half the country sp spoke speaks Russian, and they won't. And they they removed it from all programming. 
you're not actually allowed the, to use Russian in any sort of commercial dealings or it's punishable by law. I mean, they were trying wow. to basically er like erase all of Russia's connection. And by the way, Ukraine, as its current form is, it was created by the Soviets. And a lot of Russian-speaking areas, Nova Russia, which is the entire south, the east, eastern portions, those were never historically Ukrainian. They were lumped into this. I mean, Crimea was certainly lumped into it. Khrushchev gave it to Ukraine because his wife was Ukrainian. I mean, it was like literally in the 50s. It was like a gift to his wife. Wow. It, it's So the borders of Ukraine itself are arbitrary. Russia's terms were fairly reasonable. But in the week before the invasion, two things happened. First, three things happened, actually. First, Zelensky went on this big rant talking about how you know, they needed to join NATO and no, no one in NATO disagreed with him. And then he said that they needed to reconsider the 1994 treaty, which was when Ukraine gave up its nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. So then Ukraine was talking about getting nukes, basically. And then that same week after Russia had pulled its forces back, Ukraine mounted a massive offensive on the Donbass. And so which would have overrun the Donbass, probably. So everybody's like, well, I can't believe Putin, you know, went to war. Like, you know, I don't care. He shouldn't have done it. Well, you know what? I actually think you're probably a pussy because you don't understand mm -hmm. what it's like to lead a nation and you're not willing to take any sort of considerations into your security. Our country, United States, has absolutely zero right, zero right to talk about just war. Every single war we have been in since the end of the Cold War has not been a just war. Yep. You can Bingo. make some arguments perhaps about the initial invasion in Afghanistan, but everything else besides for that. And by that, you mean like the first year before yeah, Obama, yeah. A, a set of, almost said Obama, before Osama left. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Everything after that, the next 19 years have been full retard. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. So, I mean, it's it's just absolutely inconceivable that that you would, as as the leader of Russia, allow this sort of baiting to occur. And, and the reality is that I think Russia objectively exercised every single diplomatic option they possibly could for eight years. People were like, well, why didn't they you know, be diplomatic? You guys just have no fucking clue what's going on in the world. You didn't pay attention to it. I mean, all these people, all these people didn't even know they couldn't find Ukraine on a map a few months ago. No, they couldn't. Like all, all these people, dude, I found a fucking neighbor walking around my neighborhood, big Ukrainian flag on their house. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like you, it's just one of these, another fucking part. I've seen that like all these people around where I live and shit, like it is in Florida. It's just fucking crazy, man. These people are, are absolute sheep. They don't know shit. Yeah. And, and let me just make a little interesting di like side connection here with Libya. Right. So. Clinton killed Gaddafi, right? And, and people kind of wonder what was the re real reason for that. Gaddafi, when they got rid of Gaddafi, that's when all the migrant streams to Europe opened up. But mm -hmm. what's also more interesting than that is that Gaddafi, when he came into power, he shut down the slave markets. And since he was removed, one of the first things that happened when the Muslim Brotherhood took over the country is that they brought the slave markets back in where Ukrainian girls are sold as sex, sex slaves. So if you really go down this rabbit hole, you can see all these connections here. But Zelensky, let's look at Zelensky. First off, Zelensky is not even Ukrainian. Okay. He was an actor. He's a dr in drag, actually, as an actor. Yeah, I've seen. Um, and from what I can understand, based on some stories that they're trying to get ahead of, there's probably information going to be leaked that he's gay and that he does a lot of that kind of stuff. Where is he from? Whatever. He's not Ukrainian. What is he? Um, God, I forget where he's from. I forget where he's from, but he's not he's not Ukrainian by by birth. OK, yeah, I forget. I actually forget the exact location. Um, but at any rate, like he's an actor. The whole thing is is a put on is a put on show. But um, and I, he's not controlling the country. The, the two, you know, he's being on one hand controlled by the U.S. State Department and Biden because they're trying to cover their tracks and everything. And also, on the other hand, by the Nazi thugs around him. And they really are Nazis. I mean, sorry. Like, everyone, everyone's talking about, you know, like, punch a Nazi. This, it, this is the funniest thing about it, is you see all these people who are, like, allegedly, you know, anti-fascist, you know, hate Nazis. 
they are now the biggest supporters of the only really true Nazi group in the world. Yeah. But look, the bottom line is, regardless of all this stuff, you, you don't have to, you know, I, as you can tell from this, from an arguments perspective, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit sympathetic to Russia just because I can, I think in terms of real politic, you know, they had clear interest here and we continued to provoke them. I mean, when, when we signed the agreements at the end of the Cold War, it was very clearly stated that we would not expand NATO eastward. And we did that. But also you're under no delusion that Putin is not some angel. Like, because no. I'm with you on all this stuff, but I'm not stupid. This guy, is, he's done a lot of rough, uh, rough shit over his life. People have died, whatever. But I believe that he, I think he has his own interests in mind and the interests of Russia. Actually, I believe that. Like he's, for, and that's that's a lot more that can be said about places like leaders of France and Germany and Britain and stuff. These, their leaders are all fucking sellouts. Macron and the Germans and the, you know, uh, Boris. These people are all just fucking puppets for other people like the Soroses and the Bill Gates of the world. Well, well, let's look at it from this perspective. I mean, there's no question Putin's ruthless. I mean, he's killed journalists, jailed opposition people. I mean, he's he is uh, like Zelensky. Well, yeah. Well, well, this is the thing. So I, I want people to to understand some contrast stuff here. So in you know, people saw the other day there was you know pe people cheering about this that some woman went on while they were doing a broadcast on Russian news, she held up a sign basically saying, stop the war. Okay. Um, what happened to that woman? Oh my God. And you know, Putin's evil tyrannical state, she got a $300 fine or a 300 ruble fine, right. For doing it. But in Czech Republic or Slovakia, if you were to, if you were to have a conversation like this, you'd be sentenced to prison up to 25 years just for have just for publicly talking positively about Russia. Wow. They've they've frozen just people's bank accounts in Britain just yep. because they are Russian. Okay. Yep. And let's not forget prior to all this happening, what were they doing in Canada? What was Trudeau doing in Canada? Freezing dissidents bank accounts. Yeah. Okay. So whatever Putin is, Putin is. But don't for one single fucking second think that you live in a sovereign, free, democratic country. You do not. You yeah. do not. In Absolutely. America, we have political prisoners right now. There's people arrested for the January 6th of 500 or 550 or so. Yep. They're, just, they're political prisoners, in my opinion, of a fucking witch hunt. And this shit is evil and tyrannical. And the founding fathers would be extremely angry, to put it nicely. America is actually the only Western country that even has any minimal protections because the Constitution, even though it's being frayed and beaten up, still has some punch behind it. Yeah, but teeth. In countries that, yeah, teeth. But in countries that don't have a Constitution, it's literally completely irrelevant. The government can do whatever they want to you and don't think it's not going to happen. Ukraine just this week, you know free Ukraine, right? Just implemented literally the World Economic Forum's global reset plan to have all of your identity on a vaccination card that connects it to all your funds. Yeah. They're going to be trying this stuff here. This is the whole idea behind it. And as you were saying, Anthony, all the stuff with COVID was reaching a boiling point and how these guys work you know, they're kind of magicians in their own sense. So they get your energy up. They get you all pissed off. And then they redirect your energy in the way that they want it to go. So mm -hmm. everybody was getting really, really angry at their governments. You know, they've been cooped up for two years. And then the government's getting more and more harsh and tyrannical. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's now on Putin. Putin's the look, look over here. Look over yeah. here. This hand. Yeah. 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 yeah, direct your anger at uh, some some guy across the world with a proxy war that has nothing to do with you that you didn't even give a fuck about a few months ago. Yeah, exactly. And, and this is, I think, <sighs> important to be said. You don't have to, like, you can you can disregard all my arguments if you want to about Putin, whatever. You know, if you don't think, I don't, I still don't think it was right that Russia invaded Ukraine. Okay, fine, whatever. I, I don't care. That's, you can have that, you can have that consideration. Um, the reality, though, is what does it have to do with us? Does it have anything to do with us whatsoever? What, is it, what does it have to do with the Russian people, too, who are being penalized aggressively? Uh, the whole West right now, at minimum, is trying to bankrupt this country. They're trying regime change to get... There's leaders in America like Lindsey Graham calling for the assassination of Putin. They're, you know, all the services getting cut off. You know, who gives a fuck about Netflix, but it's way beyond that. 
it's credit cards, bank processing. Like this is a war on the Russian people that are had nothing to do with this, basically, right? Yeah, like, it's fucking retarded. And 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 of course, you know, their intention <laughs> was to get Putin out of power, but all it's done is backed up his support because then even mm -hmm. Russians didn't like Putin. They're like, well, wait a minute, they don't really hate Putin; they hate Russia. They hate me. Yeah. And so now everybody is behind it. I just I want to make a point here because you brought up the economic <clears throat> stuff, which is really, really important. Yeah. Um people a lot of people have asked why didn't Russia do any of this stuff in 2014 when the Ukrainian military was like, you know, tiny and everything. Well, I think first off, aside from the optics and trying to give diplomacy a chance, I mean, the the Ukrainians never agreed or abided by the Minsk Accords or the Minsk Minsk II Accords, which basically had to deal with um the conflict in the Donbass and which would have allowed them actually to keep the Donbass just as an autonomous region, um, which they refused. They've refused everything constantly with negotiations. They've refused it. But back in 2014, Russia was very, very integrated with the global economy and very fragile. And so they could have really gotten knocked out. In the last eight years, Putin has gradually reduced his holdings of U.S. treasuries and has increased his holdings of gold, actually even silver too, and mm -hmm. Bitcoin even. Um, Russia was prepared economically for this. So you hear all this stupid shit in the media about how the sanctions are killing Russia and everything. No, it's not. It's I mean, look, are they facing some some tough times? Sure, their inflation, you know, they, they've, they've had they have inflation now, you know, the value of the ruble dropped, but the public is, is aware of it. The government stabilized it. There's no bank runs. They've prevented all that stuff. And the reality is that in six to 12 months, Russia is going to be completely fine because Russia has has spent time building alliances across the world, making its case very clear. China is completely on board with Russia. And by the way, so is Saudi Arabia. So is the UAE. So is Brazil. So is in, India. India, so is yeah. Venezuela, right? We, yeah. had, we were so pathetic we had to go to Venezuela, which because by the way, Russian oil and Venezuelan oil are of the same style like you might ask why do we have to get russian oil we were getting russian oil to replace venezuelan oil because it's a medium crude which refineries have to you can't just like substitute it with light crude from saudi arabia so then we tried to go back to venezuela all these countries are basically saying "Fuck you the west is run by degenerates who yeah. are frankly criminally insane yep. and even though i think the ccp is a, an evil scum country and even though you can say Russia is more of an autocratic state, they're at least run by sane individuals. We are not run by sane individuals. Yeah, the people running America and Canada and Britain are like suicidal in a way, yeah. like yeah. nationally suicidal for globalism or whatever the fuck they want to promote the WF crap. I think they're genocidal too, to be honest. No, hundred percent. Like, I mean, they want to kill thirteen out of fourteen people. They've said that, but you know, whatever. The, yeah. The, the the whole point here, though, is that their intent to hurt Russia is only going to lead to the collapse of the dollar as the world reserve currency. And that is happening. That is imminent. It's going to happen well, in the next few months. I think what you're saying, too, is that uh, if I can reframe it, like what America has done and NATO and other Western nations, it's created. They're setting up uh, by intention or stupidity a multipolar world where the dollar is no longer the reserve currency, where America is no longer kind of the leader, all this kind of stuff. Like they're setting up almost the, the preconditions for a real World War III. Uh, yeah. Not even from a hot war, not even from an immediate hot war that's possible now, with like a no-fly zone, but literally setting up alliances, pushing alliances, pushing Russia to be allied with China and shit like that. And that, that to me is like super crazy and super dangerous because like World War III could be easily the end of the world, way faster than anything else. This is in my understanding. So they they've been stealing money from the United States um, for years. And Catherine Austin Fitz has some interesting stuff with this. And if you go down the rabbit hole even more so, you know, kind of with 9-11, et cetera. At any rate, they've been stealing money for years from the United States and moving it um, overseas, um, moving it into black budgets. And so the debt of the U.S. has been going up and up and up. And they basically by the late 90s, they understood that they had fucked this country to such a degree that, you know, with the pension funds all getting moved up, you know, being basically emptied, put in put in markets and stuff like that, that are 
that are like ephemeral, right? They don't actually have value. They're never going to be able to be sustained. Um, they realized that they had bankrupted the country. And so what they're doing now is they're trying to collapse it, but give a reason for its collapse that isn't them. And then yeah. to use the collapse to move things to the central bank, digital currencies, right? Which is like, which is called like an evil Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin is decentralized, limited amount, right? Deflationary and um, non-censorable or controllable, the CBDCs are centralized, unlimited production and completely controllable. They can shut it off. They can tell you, you know, you only have two burgers you can have per month. The rest of your burgers have to be bug burgers, right? This is literally stuff the World Economic Forum has put out. You can watch videos on it. Yep. They've done their own presentations. It's not a fucking conspiracy theory. It's their own fucking presentations. Wake it's up, like the, people. Wake like the, the fuck uh, up. It's like the evolution of fiat currency. It's like yeah. the next level of fiat retard shit. Except there's no way out of it. Yeah. If, you, if, if that becomes implemented, it really is game over for the planet because they can shut off your ability to eat or do anything. And um, so anyway, the war is a convenient way to kind of collapse the entire Western system that they have already hollowed out yeah. from the inside. So the only thing that I'm, I'm becoming, unfortunately, more convinced that there is going to be some kinetic action because, um, you know, all this propaganda about Ukraine winning and doing well um, and, and how Russia is playing on doing a chemical weapons attack. That's all the kind of shit that they do to pre-plan a false flag. Yep. yep. I think there's going to be some false flag like that. Um, and then that's going to be used as justification for NATO to come in. Yep. And Russia will hit nato troops absolutely nato troops cross the border into ukraine they are going to get hit with cruise missiles and if if you were to game this out i'm not saying that russia's military is stronger than nato's military it's not but russia would be prepared to lose a million people in this war and you're going to see western countries revolt when ten thousand people are dead yep. i mean it's going we we have zero will or capacity to fight this right now um Russians too have a history of fighting and fighting like these kind of crazy odds. Like they lost millions of, uh, of men in the in World War II, way more than like America and Britain did. The the and, low estimates of what Russia lost was twenty four million people in World War II. Um, I mean, I mean uh, combatants though, not like you're talking more about like uh, genocide and famine and shit like that, right? No, no, I'm talking about combatants. Twenty four million. Oh, combatants. I don't know. They lost a further twenty million civilians. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty wild. Million people in, in insane numbers of people. They lost more than yeah. all of all of Western Europe combined. I think I think this is why too America is so. It's one of the reasons America, the Boomers, you know, whatever, all the way through now, even before them, were so insulated from like the real consequences of what Europe went through and Russia and China. Like these people have lost. America lost so so little in World War II. Like you know, nobody's it, you know, Europe was blown to smithereens. There was genocide. There was, you know, massive war. There was famine. There was cannibalism. Mm -hmm. Like none of that shit was happening in Kansas and Texas. Have you heard about mass cannibalism and genocide in Arkansas? No. Mm -hmm. Like this country has been so fucked. Our grandparents, even people who went to war, they saw a lot more. Obviously, up close. Like my grandfather was in World War II. But this is just like it's it's nothing compared to what these people have been through. They they lost tens and tens of millions of people. Uh, all a lot of these countries, you know, all the way through. So it's like. You know, China killed 55, 54 million Chinese starving to death. There was the Holodomor, like the, the genocide, like America's just in Canada too, just so fucking insulated. And I think it's really had consequences, you know, not only not only geopolitically and politically within our own countries, but all the way down to like masculinity and femininity and shit. That's why it's part of why things have gotten so fucking crazy. Yeah. And right. Yeah. No, no, 100%. 100%. I mean, America, America lost more people in the civil war than it did in every other war it fought combined. So you go back to 1860 and 1861. I mean, the population of the U S was, I think about 7 million in the South. And it was like maybe three times that in the North, three to four times that in the North. I mean, and we lost about 600,000 people throughout yep. the entire course of the war more than, I mean, World War II, we lost, I think only 300,000. Is that right? A couple, something like that. Yeah, it's a couple hundred thousand. thousand, something like that. Yep. I mean, the point is that, with the exception of the Civil War, which is incredibly brutal in yeah. this country, 
we have not really experienced pain in a yep. war. And by the uh, way, the modern equivalent of the civil war deaths is something like six or seven million now. So yeah. if those amount of people died today in an in American civil war, it'd be the death of like seven million Americans. Uh, Especially which is in the South. Yeah, I yeah. think it, at the end of the civil war, one out of three men between the age of 20 and 40 in the South were either killed or wounded. And one out of 10 in the North were killed or wounded. And so cities are burnt to the ground in the South and shit, like all kinds of crazy shit happened. Yeah, yeah it was absolutely <laughs> brutal. So, um, you know, we, we're not going to have the stomach for that fight. The, the only thing that I feel positive about with the situation is that I don't expect it's going to get nuclear. And the reason is twofold. Well, first off, the Pentagon um, does not want this war. This is being driven by like the State Department and the CIA and stuff like that. The Pentagon keeps shooting stuff, da stuff down. Um, not that they won't, won't get dragged into it. They obviously have their lackeys there. But within, and I have my own kind of theories about some of this stuff, but uh, I don't, I'll just suffice to say, I don't believe that ballistic missile command is has has given access to biden and there's a lot of evidence of this and i and, and so i don't believe that that sort of core group which is the only part of the military that is not infiltrated and is heavily like highly highly professional the most serious people who deal with the nuclear weapons they Trump shut them up in Cheyenne Mountain on March 15th, 2020, out of an abundance of caution because we may already be at war yet. And Cheyenne Mountain has not opened up since to the outside world. So they knew some shit was going on with the release of COVID. But at any rate, I think that some of that idea about kind of what's been going on with, with this regime has trickled through the ranks. The Pentagon's becoming, especially after Afghanistan, they're becoming more and more, you know, pulling back more and more. And um, frankly, though, even if all that stuff I'm saying isn't true, at the, at the end of the day, nuclear forces of Russia and the United States are in constant co conversation with each other. They're always communicating. So whatever hap else happens on the ground with, you know, conventional weaponry and stuff like that, those two groups are very, very serious and they're talking to each other. And I, I, I'm, I'm telling you that if Biden were to tell American nuclear forces to fire a nuclear weapon, they would not listen. And I don't actually think that they even recognize him because remember, because he wasn't even carrying his own, he was carrying his own briefcase, you know? Like this is this is something that indicates that there wasn't really a handoff of that material to him. Which yeah, probably way, like ice cream in the suitcase too. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. Like exactly. Chip. You know, as if as if he could even remember how to put the codes in anyway. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, but you know what? To be honest, people think it's a matter of like, oh, the president types in the code and they fire the missiles. That's not how it works. Since 1954, they have all sorts of protocols. It's a handshake agreement. the The president sends a, a message to nuclear command to launch, and then the generals in nuclear command use their own judgment to decide: is the president compromised? Is there? And and they have all sorts of protocols that have been. In, place since 1954 to deal with this in the event of like a Manchurian candidate kind of situation. Hmm. So anyway. Yeah, which we've kind of had nonstop with a few exceptions for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's move on. Let's move back to dating and stuff. It's fun talking about this because it's such a huge, well, I don't want to make light of the fact that there's people suffering and dying, but the stupidity of it all on the American side and the West side and all the simping, it's just, it's so sad too, if we can close it out. Like I want to get your thoughts on this real quick. All, there's a lot of MAGA people that, you know, Trump Republican, so to speak. I'm not really a Trump Republican. I'm more of like a Ron Paul Republican, but mm -hmm. I love Trump and I love what he's done. And I'm looking forward to seeing, I saw him recently in Orlando. It's always super mm -hmm. cool seeing him in person. The light, the energy yeah. of that guy, man. See, it's crazy. But, but uh, you know, even like the Sebastian Gorkas and a lot of other people that I kind of liked, it's like they've just been hyper simping for Ukraine. Uh, totally in alliance with like the Hillary Clintons and the Lindsey Grahams and the CNNs and the MSNBC. It's like, it's pathetic. Yeah. I've, I really didn't expect the simping to be so hard and so fast. They like, it's like they have, they have, they have like cognitive whiplash from it. It came around, they came around so fast on this. 
and uh, it just it makes me sick. Like it, yeah. it, it shows you how entrenched neocons, neocon thinking is even beyond neocon individuals and the neoliberals and the uniparty. Like it's it's uh, demoralizing almost in a way. That's how that's how bad it's been for, in my opinion, to see. There's a couple of people like Ian Smith, for example, one of our own speakers who's running for Congress in New Jersey. Fuck yeah. I see him all the time. He, he, he runs my gym. Yeah, I love that guy. Yeah, yeah he's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I just We actually just uh, uh, edited a speech that's actually on the channel now. It's mm -hmm. not public yet, but we got it done. But yeah, he's one of the few. And there's a couple of people like him that have been consistently like Ukraine, this all this Ukraine shit is retarded. But uh, have, you, have you seen that too? Like a lot of people that you supported and liked have just like turned tail on this shit like retards? Well, you know, I, I don't know to what extent, it, like my personal opinion is that to varying degrees, you're looking at 80 to 90 percent of Congress being compromised. Um, oh, easy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can say how badly are they, all of them compromised? There's maybe only 20 percent are true, true, like evil scum in on everything. Other ones are maybe just blackmailed because you know, they did this or that. <clears throat> but whether there's weak cowards like they I are, I don't They're discount all... that. No, no, 100%, 100%. Um, for the Republican Party, even aside from, you know, any beliefs that this is just all orchestrated, they make so much of their money from the military industrial complex. And yeah. I mean, just the donations pour in whenever there's a war, right? Yeah. As defense contractors make boatloads of money. So there's just, there's enormous amounts of corruption with the whole thing. Um, I do think many of them will start to pull back because there just isn't any support in the American public for it. I mean, I would say probably about a third of the country is about, I, I, maybe you think I'm being generous, but I do think about a third of the country is to varying degrees of where we're at with yeah. it. And then another third of the country is like, oh my God, Ukraine, you know, we need to need to send, you know, nuclear weapons over there, you know, immediately, whatever, just idiots. Yeah. But this other third of the country hates Putin, thinks the invasion is bad, but does not want to get involved in the war regardless. Yeah. And the Republican Party is completely covered up by like 90% of the Republican Party, 95% does not want to go to the war, regardless of whether they, they're, they think that, you know, there's some justification for it and your Ukraine's corrupt or whether or not they just hate Putin, but they don't want to get involved in a foreign war. So the Republicans are not going to be able to sustain this for a super long period of time, yeah. um, especially because, and I'll, I'll just end on this little, little coda here with the, with the economics of this stuff. If this goes to the next level, what the West did with, with these economic sanctions is, is unprecedented seizing a central bank's for, like currency mm -hmm. absolutely unprecedented and they create the situation now they're saying in the media oh like well russia's defaulting well, well russia said well you can pay them with uh, the with the dollars that you have that you froze and or if they won't do that we'll pay you in rubles but neither of those things are being allowed by western sanctions so it's like a force majeure situation that Russia is trying to pay, but it can't. And so what ends up happening is that probably a lot of these creditors are going to go against the Western countries because they're the ones who are preventing them from getting paid. But more than this, the amount of trust that's been destroyed, like the financial systems built on trust and all that yeah. trust has just been obliterated. Yep. And you put Russia in a situation where they could have retaliated even further, but they haven't done that yet. But if war breaks out, you better believe that they're going to cut off the, the, the oil and gas yeah. to to Europe and Germany is not is like over 90 percent run on Russian energy so it's at a certain point it becomes not even a matter of cost they just simply won't have any gas or fuel to run the entire country can you imagine every single industry in Germany is going to shut down there's not going to be any fuel there's not going to be prices of everything are going to go through the roof. I mean, fertilizer and food, Russia and Ukraine and Kazakhstan and Belarus account for over a third of the global production of wheat and fertilizer. Yep. I mean, this, this stupidity is unbelievable. We are going to get gas in the United States at $9 per gallon, but U.S. is going to look pretty compared to Europe. Europe is 
totally, completely fucked. And when people realize that, that this war, Russia is prepared to take pain, but they're also, they're not just mentally prepared. They are economically prepared to do it. We are not. This whole paper tiger is going to collapse big time. And when that happens, I do think you are going to start to see more of this energy get redirected back against Western yeah. governments from the population. So Good. I fucking hate most of our governments, so I'm all about it. Uh, I think at minimum 90% of the federal government needs to be abolished. Like, and that's just, that's just talking about America, never mind the state governments and then Canada and all that shit. And by the way, just, you know, for any, for anybody watching this, this is just something I'm, I see happening. I'm not endorsing it. Right. Just something I see happening for any of the, yeah. any, anybody watching. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of people that stalk the Manosphere now. There was like a Secret Service, you know, public report that came out a couple of days ago. I'm, of course, preparing an open letter to my governor, my attorney general, my state, uh, my senators, Rick Scott, Mark Rubio, a couple other people. I'm sick and tired of the Manosphere being uh, this, you know, hostile propaganda to, you know, demonize uh, this wonderful, positive community for men and fathers. So I'm sick of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If they're watching, they can suck my balls and eat shit, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. it's still a free country. You still have freedom of speech. Yeah, yeah, and I'm going to use it. Let's talk about some uh, other issues, though, from your newsletter you've been bringing up. I want to get into some more fun stuff like sex, yeah. masturbation, <laughs> cheating, Tinder. Like, you talk about a lot of great shit in newsletters, man. It's really, it's a content newsletter. It's fucking fantastic. Most newsletters are just, like, information garbage to sell you shit. And your shit's just dope. It's mostly just, like, how to live a better life as a man and understand various issues. Um, talk to me about Tinder. Like, have you seen Tinder evolve over the years and the, as, as it relates to the dating marketplace, the sexual marketplace? COVID, obviously, the KUFID phenomena shut down a lot of bars and clubs, which uh, were traditional places people met. Mm -hmm. um, even as, you know, in the pickup artist community, this is a big thing. That's where I learned game. You know, yeah. back, back before, uh, you know, being a keyboard jockey was the goal in the Manosphere. You could actually go out and do hundreds and thousands of approaches, cold approaches in real life. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. I learned I learned the hard way by getting rejected and women throwing drinks at me and you know fun stuff too getting laid and shit like that and makeouts sure. and phone numbers stories. phone numbers back in the day stories yeah. yeah these poor kids now just have fucking Tinder and Bumble and a bunch of only skanks so talk to me about Tinder though and how it relates to the modern men and even you know young women that are uh, you know using these apps and stuff what are your thoughts on Tinder what's the Pat Stemmen take on Tinder was that funny I was actually talking to a client about this this morning I mean. It's fundamentally broken at this point. Um, back when it first started, and, and frankly, online dating before, back in in twenty fifteen, right when it first came out, um, it was it was great. You know, I mean, all of like I, I did a lot of the online dating back in OKCupid before it became like some crazy social justice platform. Yeah. Back in, like you know 2011 20, through twenty thirteen, and it it was like a great way to meet meet women and you know there's a lot of attractive women on there and they you know and they they were normal right some maybe were a little bit more shy or whatever that they were online but that was kind of like the golden age because at that point people were still normal they were still yeah. going out they had friends they were living life and um online dating was just kind of an ancillary way to to meet people so you know you'd still go out with friends and go to bars but make you know you didn't have it on your phone, right? Yeah. That was a big part of it. But even when you even, had it on your phone in those early years, it was okay because people people were getting used to it. And and I think it's that people were normal. They knew how to live life. As we've gone on from there, and especially with COVID, what's happened is that people have – Tony, I'm banned on Tony. I got banned too like 10 times. <laughs> yeah. People have become – unable to basically function in normal society. Um, it's broken people's minds. They're freaked out to go out. Um, and to the extent that they have friends, they're very, very tiny, insulated groups. And so what's happened is that online dating has reflected more and more in that anxiety. So you have a lot, a lot of anxious people going on there. And so the algorithm, and then you also, I think, have some skewing, like political skewing with the algorithm um, that is very much caters to female ego 
because I guess it gets more engagement, right? But you're now having this really skewed situation where more and more like only this very, very tiny amount of guys are getting any sort of halfway decent girls mm-hmm. who they're matching with. Um, like I, I've had clients who are ha- like good looking guys, like, you know, they're in good shape, mm-hmm. solid profile, and they either get unattractive women or older women. And, you know, they might be attractive women, but they're older than them. It's like, and it's kind of like a, what is going on with this algorithm that this is how you're, you're selecting people for them. Well, so, these women are also, I think, getting kind of delusional and entitled. Like yeah. they'll, they'll swipe, you know, left or whatever is it le- yeah, left on attractive guys that they would be girly and giggly and, you know, get butterflies around it in real life. Like yeah. there, there's, there's a complete disconnect between what they're actually attracted to and just the visuals of it. And they can't, they have like, no, these girls are like, it's almost like the women are also socially retarded now where women used to be much more social, socialized. That's kind of with the zoomer chicks. I think that's kind of dissipated. And they're also now like, uh, they're just as retarded as the, uh, the red pill retards, as far as I'm concerned, the worst of them. No, a hundred percent. They're, they're super anxious. They can't, um, they, they, they're always like, it's like, they're afraid of everything and um, feel like they're. So it's like they need to go through these intermediaries to to be able to kind of modulate the you know conversations for them and and of course there is this ego aspect to it also which is that they get presented with you know some guy who maybe on paper is super super attractive and everything so they're like okay I want him well the reality is that if that guy is even going to see you he's just going to fuck you that's yeah. it I mean there's there's no there's no sort of realistic pairing. It's all like an ego and entitlement thing. Um, Dude, when I, I used to be on Tinder and Bumble, I would swipe left on like 90 something percent of women. Yeah. Like they're, they're all just fucking gross and fat and it got worse every year. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I really have to say that it, there was like a brief uptick of it being good in um, the very beginning of COVID because a okay. bunch of like regular people went on who normally wouldn't. Yeah. But this is another variable actually which is that a lot of the more normal, healthy people, when they get on that app, they're like, what the fuck is this? And then they get off of it. And so it's becoming more and more of like an insane asylum. Yeah. So there's also that element. Um, It's a corrupt shithole like Ukraine. Yes. Yes. No, 100%. (laughs) I mean, the, the kind of rule with online dating now is that and it used to used to be able to filter for it much more easily. But you really want to get girls who have only been on the app for like less than two weeks. Cause if you, yeah. if you get girls who have been on it for months, I mean, they're just zero, like it's all you're, they're totally fucked up. Yeah. So yeah. heartbroken, fucked up, jaded, you know, they've been, you know, just whatever the fuck. Yeah. It's, I, I agree that they have to be fresh to it. Have to be new, fresh pickings. I I'm just going to see this right now. I'm seeding it. Um, hmm. There, there is actually, I'm, I'm working with, someone on developing a different dating app cool so that's that's the first kind of announcement here that's gonna break all this shit um you know yeah. we're still we're still in the preliminary phases of it but cool it's, uh i i feel i feel optimistic about about where it's gonna go they've pretty much all been like super feminist too so anything that would be against that narrative would be great tender actually is less retarded than bumble was the worst of it yeah. The, the, the the CEO is like overtly hyper feminist. She used yeah. to be, I think, an employee at Tinder too early on. Right. Yeah. I, I got ban- Bumble too is much more effective at banning you. Like I could get around Tinder bans for a while, but Bumble was getting they started tracking like my my IP address and shit. Like they got really they even banned <laughs> me on from Twitter once. Got posted on Twitter. The, the actual the, the official Bumble account, I was kind of mocking them because I was posting screenshots of the shit I was saying to girls that would get me laid. Yeah. You know, it's all kinds it's kind of asshole game stuff. And the Bumble people were like, oh, yeah. And they fucking banned me like immediately in my actual Bumble account. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. I think I think they just because my name, Anthony, was on it. And I think they're able to identify by Orlando and Anthony or whatever. Mm-hmm. I guess they just there wasn't that many Anthony's in Orlando, maybe a few hundred. And they there, just, was, there was there was some this, the speed of it, though. The speed of it. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. You, you triggered one girl behind the scenes there who really. Yeah. Wanted that. yeah. Dude, it was like within an hour. I was like, holy shit, these people are psychos, dude. Mm-hmm. And all I was saying is like, I want to come over your face and make you my girlfriend. Like, this is standard, you know, kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Bumble T, you could send dick pics, which is pretty cool. 
Tinder, <laughs> you, could, you can send dick pics on Tinder. I think early on you could, but that was before my time. Right. Tinder, was, Tinder was wise enough to block any kind of image sending. You can only send like mm -hmm. gifts and stupid shit like that. Yeah, I had fun with it though, man, back in the, my heyday with it, with it was 2016, 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of fun with these apps. Uh, it was very reckless what I was doing. I've changed my behavior since then sure. like, quite a bit. Um, I'm in a relationship now. You know, I have an yeah. actual official girlfriend, the first lady first of the manosphere in, in training, in training. Yeah. Yeah, everyone loved her at 21, man. She made like 400 cookies by hand mm -hmm. for everybody. And uh, yeah, a, lot of good, a lot of good comments from people. And I told people to be like very, very uh, raw in what they thought of her with me and stuff like that. The so she's fosters. Beautiful. I mean, she's a beautiful girl. Thanks, I haven't met her in person, but I look yeah, forward yeah. to this fall. Yeah, I do. We, yeah, I really wish you were there last year and look forward to seeing you back, man, at 21, 100%. Mm -hmm. And 22, and even Patriarch now that you're a Patriarch, your father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's move on to some other subjects. So, if me newsletters, uh, enough about, you know, Tinder, such a shithole of stuff. Let's talk about your speech, actually, which is Healing Yourself as a Man that you gave mm -hmm. at 21 Convention 2020. And I put it out recently, about a month ago, maybe two months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, late, yeah, late January, early Feb, I think. Yeah, it, it hit pretty well on the channel. People uh, got good views. People loved it. The watch time's like super high. People actually cared about it and went all the way through it. So talk to me about healing yourself as a man because this seems like it's fucking, at least in the red pill wing of the manosphere, even the black pill wing, there's not a lot of like healing going on. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of like theory and, you know, different forms of negativity. Those two communities don't get along, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I like the black pill guys that Tony hangs out with, for example, yeah. a lot better. But yeah. there's still like this this pessimism with uh, with facing reality and your healing approach to facing the truth and facing reality seems a lot more white pilled, if I can mm -hmm. put it that way. So talk to me about healing yourself as a man, what you went through in that speech and why you think it's important for men to face their trauma and become more masculine. Well, I think a lot of guys have an innate suspicion when they hear the term healing. And I actually think it's a healthy suspicion. I mean, a lot of these wimp words have been weaponized um, to frankly propagate female narcissism for being just totally yeah. honest about it. Um, Heal your toxic masculinity, you bigot, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and also there are, when I talk about healing, there are two kinds of healing and they're actually both valuable, but they have different places. And so you have masculine healing and you have feminine healing. And... And actually, as a man, you, you you might need, you know, both of them, depending on kind of what your exact issue is. But essentially, um, let's let's give an analogy like like masculine healing is is more of like the tough love stuff. Hmm. Like it's constructive related and feminine healing is more of, you know, unconditional love. Right. So it's like if the fe if the feminine says. Um, I love you just as you are. The masculine says, I love you, but you need to fix this shit, right? And yeah. so an, an analogy for this is if you break your leg, okay, it's, you know, it's nice that, you know, your mom or your girlfriend's like, oh my God, are you okay? And it's like, wants to be there for you emotionally. But I mean, if you just have that, your leg's still fucking broken. Because a guy comes over and says, all right, put this stick in your mouth and then they snap your leg back, you know, and then set the, set the splint so it can heal, yeah. right? Masculine healing in that sense can be tough, but it does help to put you, put you back together. Um, and so there needs to be a balance of those two things. In the speech though, a lot of what I was talking about, I did, I think I did touch on some of that, but a lot of what I was talking about was the relationship that a man has to himself and its connection to his father and sort of into the initiatory process of becoming a man. And that's something that's been really taken from, from guys today. And the reality is that you, as a man, your patterns are deeply, deeply embedded in with your father to the extent that you either become just like him or you become total opposite of him. But rarely does a man become something that is not in response to him, his father mm. become his own person and a lot of that has to do with this sort of underlying um you know frustration um just of not having the relationship with his father that he would have wanted to have mm. which ends up being a reflection of his relationship with himself so i do a lot of inner child work with clients and you can look at your inner child as like 
basically a sub personality unconscious aspect of yourself that a lot of self sabotage comes from. And so if you have a bad really like as we go through adolescence, our conscious mind develops more and we often develop an adversarial relationship with this child. So it's like the child is out there in the world and he gets hurt and he doesn't, you know, and he feels bad. And then gradually as your conscious mind develops, it's like, okay, well, you know what? Stop being a bitch that if we do this, they're going to attack us. So we have to protect ourselves in this way. And that can become a really negative dynamic. And you see that a lot in the manosphere because it's guys who are trying to get better, but they are basically, it's all about self self-improvement, but the subtext of the self-improvement is that they're not actually valuable intrinsically. Yeah. So a lot of the, so you can argue that there's like a level of feminine healing here and self-acceptance unconditionally, accepting the child in my, you know, terminology unconditionally, but then there's also this this piece of in order to do that in order to accept your child you have to have this sort of reconciliation with your father and even if your father's not around you can still do this to an extent and it's not even it's not about the outcome exactly like it's nice if you get a good outcome from it and you clear a lot of bad energy but it's really just being at peace with him and being grateful and understanding you know your father was a flawed individual and he he did the best that he could and what I find happens is that when you have this kind of conversation with your father, where you um, challenge him on why he wasn't, why he didn't do certain things, while also appreciating him, what happens is that the the prior dynamic gets deconstructed, and you either meet your father on an equal playing field, or even you become essentially the father to you, your father. Um, but the end goal of this in either case is that you frankly become a man. And yeah. as long as you are continuing to hold this sort of negativity towards your father, you're sort of implying that you're still the child and that you're not able to, to know, to act as a man with agency in the world. It's all about rebelling against him. Mm. So that was a, a key aspect of, and I go into other stuff as well. You know, yeah. talking about initiatory experiences but i think that's probably the most important part because I've, I've done that work with clients i don't know hundreds of times now and it's just absolutely astounding almost every single time it, it just le leads to like a completely different dynamic with his father and, and himself yeah so. i agree with a lot of that i disagree with some but it's interesting to hear different perspectives yeah, and definitely you're coming from a positive place, and I think you're helping a lot of guys figure shit out, which mm -hmm. is a lot more than can be said about so many other dating coach frauds and shit that really don't give a fuck about anything other than their brand and making money and really like just materialistic, like uh, simplistic bullshit mm -hmm. that is just pathetic. So I love that you care about these issues and you you're you're a warrior for the truth and you're a fighter for it, and I love it. I appreciate that. Even yeah. when I disagree with stuff. Well, well, yeah, and, but I'll also say this. I mean, and I don't know exactly what the disagreement is, and, and that's that, that's okay. Like, we don't have to get into it. But the yeah. to, just to put in a context thing, um, for a specific kind of guy, he may have this issue where he has a lot of negative self-talk that he's internalized from his father. Yes. And so w this, this sort of practice is really most applicable in those scenarios where a guy ha is very tough on himself and he needs to clear that energy out. If a guy, however, is not really doing anything, um, you know, this isn't, this isn't because you might have to have some of this like feminine healing energy. It's not the only answer. And in some cases, it's not the answer at all. I mean, I deal with, I'm, I'm very context related with my work and there are some guys it's like, they're like, well, you know, I just want to do some more, you know, inner work, inner healing work. I'm like, well, actually you just need to fucking do something. You need to decide that enough is enough. And Why I don't, don't you sell a magic pill to fix everything? Pat, what's wrong with you? Can I, can I just <laughs> buy one on your website? Dude, just take, just take the Pat pill. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you yeah. everything's going to be okay. Right. You just have to keep taking it. Take one every day. I'm, I'm kind of amazed with the pill thing that I like actually the pill analogies. And I think they're useful in a lot of cases. Uh, they're not entirely, you know, bad, but it's like these people think they can literally buy a magic pill for 20 bucks 
you slap red pill on it and people are like, I'm going to be red pill, bro. Women are hoes. I'm red pill. It's like, dude, you just, you just drop somebody 20 bucks and you think you're red pilled. Like you just bought a cheap trinket and like a, you bought like a little bobblehead is what you bought. Red pill, a bobblehead, red pill. And you think you're like, it, it's like a key. no, we should though. That, that's what it is to me when these dudes yeah. buy, when they buy a book of some fraud or, you know, they send a $5 super chat or they buy this little ebook on gum road from some retard. who can't even get laid. I mean, it's, it's cringe that these dudes think they're red pill. And it's like, all you've done is buy the cheap imitation of a red pill. And you get scared from people like me and like, like you, Pat, they give people real truths that are really, um, like I heard it described once on my channel from a commenter in one of my videos that I was like the, I was featured in. And a lot of the videos obviously are not of me. They're speakers like you and whoever. But he said when he watched my video, it was like, he felt like it was the red pill being injected directly into his veins like intravenously because mm. I was just so intense with it. And I really don't give a fuck about anything but the truth 99% yeah. of the time. Everything else at least is is far beneath that as a distant second. What is true? What is true? What is true? And that to me is what the red pill is. It has to be about the truth, not the imitation or the appearance of truth, the actual like real truth, uh, well, factual know, otherwise. Well, you know, I, I, I love what you just said there. And I was thinking, you know, the new Matrix movie, which, you know, I enjoyed for some, you know, for certain reasons. I, I, I agree with a lot of the criticisms as well. But yeah. um, at any rate, though, uh, they have this scene where Neo's like taking, you know, he has to take his, his blue pills every day yeah. to kind of, you know, keep things going. And it just goes back to the fact that the truth, it resonates on a deep level. You don't need to keep hearing it over and over again once you hear it it shocks you to your core right but lies and distortions if you're going to maintain the illusion they have to be constantly reinforced and that's this whole thing it's like oh i'm i'm red pilled but you know a lot of these guys they just are continually consuming red pill content over and over again i mean let's be let's be fucking honest here for a second is hypergamy really that complicated how many essays on hypergamy? Like I'm the world's expert on hypergamy. And That's I can right. tell you, <laughs> you do not need to write four books on hypergamy. You don't need to do it. It's, it's really a very, very simple idea, which is that women select for the best men. It's a natural thing. And they, you know, they, they date across and up. It's basically what it is with women, that they're looking for the best men. And guess what? Men do the same thing for women. They want the most attractive, fertile woman. We have our own version of it. And every woman is hypergamous, but not every woman engages in hypergamy in the same way, right? One woman, the second she sees a, she's fucked up, the second she sees a higher status guy, she throws herself at him, right? That's a trauma response. A more healthy, adjusted woman, if her man is consistently on a lower level than other men, she'll push it internally against him to perform better. And only at a certain point, then will she leave him, right? There's a difference. It's the same kind of thing with a guy, like a guy is married to, you know, his, you know, he's married and his, and his wife is maybe a little bit out of shape. And so he's going to incur, I mean, ideally it wouldn't have happened to begin with, but he's going to be there and kind of push her towards that to or if he's kind of a shithead, then he's he's married to a woman and he just goes and fucks any attractive girl that comes by. I mean, men have their own version of it. There's a lot of, you know, I'm empathetic to women who have experienced this kind of stuff. They've, by their own well, estimations, you, been good said, wives for years. And then their guy sees a younger girl and fucks her, right? I mean, that is a big pain point yeah. among women. That's male hypergamy, whatever the fuck you want to call it. So Socrates calls it hypogamy, actually. He, tr he tries to give a name to it, to ma male sexual psychology and male mm -hmm. sexual strategy. But what you've done here, independent of what any other speaker like Socrates has done, is you've tried to identify male sexuality and male sexual strategy. And that is kind of forbidden uh, in the red pill wings of the manosphere, even other elements too. They don't want to talk about it. It's just all about women. That's one of the, I think, the saddest things I've seen happen in recent years in the manosphere as I continue to try to push forward with, with uh, positive truth messages uh, truth focused speakers and, and content that actually matters and actually moves the needle on pushing the community forward. But a lot of the communities become, it's become very, very blue pill. 
what would have been called blue pill just a couple years ago by some of the same guys. So basically it all just revolves around women now, what women want, their sexual strategy. That's all this crap is. It's all, it's actually very female centric. The hypergamy robots that believe that are just obsessed with hypergamy, they're just one example of a couple, but they're obsessed with what women want, what women think. It's all about, like, it's all about, that's why the hypergamy is the, um, kind of like a hammer they have that's going to nail everything in the world, right? And then even if I can paraphrase Dr. Sean Smith, if I interpret his analysis correctly, he did a 45 minute video breaking down the manosphere's conception of epergamy, particularly the, from the fraud father. And basically what that guy is trying to do is use epergamy as a paramount issue in women to the point that they're like hypergamy robots Yes. to, to the, almost to the uh, complete exclusion of other psychological factors like trauma, like their childhood, like the relationship with their dad. Like yeah. any other number of, you know, pain and pleasure, like human psychology is insanely fucking complex, right? We're still at the very beginnings of understanding this, but you have this like idiot uh, cult leader try to just like turn these, try to convince men that women are nothing but hypergamy robots. And there's nothing else to learn and understand, not only about women, but even then about yourself. What is your sexual strategy as a man? What do other men do? What have men done historically? Why do we do this? How does our species operate as a sexually dimorphic species? Like, why are these things important? Yeah. Like it's, it's like all that shit is just irrelevant. It's just women, 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 you know, pergamy robots, women suck. Women are hoes. Fuck these hoes. Give me $5 super chat. Like it's just a cesspool of fucking the manosphere is such a cool thing, but it's also become like this fucking corrupt shithole like Ukraine yeah. <laughs> with like rampant fraud yeah. from guys who can't get laid and don't know shit really don't. It's like pseudoscientific garbage. I mean, it's, I need if someone needs to make a whole documentary, you know, maybe I'll do that. But just about mm -hmm. how retarded all this shit is. <laughs> yeah, you should do it. You should do it. I mean, you're I can't think of a better person to do it. You'd have all the, the 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 basis points to be able to, you know, all the citations are all <laughs> yeah. they're all there, you know. Yeah. Um, but you're yeah. making that you just made a simple point though that men have a sexual strategy too. And this is like not this is very taboo in the manosphere, which is very bizarre. Because you think the manosphere would try to deal with this and understand it, but we don't. Not enough anyway. Yeah. No, no, I mean, but that, that's a it's a really, really good point to emphasize because there's there's a couple issues with that. I mean, the first is that when you're only focused on women, mm -hmm. there that's projection, right? It's projection. But the other part of it is that the subtext is that you're driven by women, so women have the control. So these guys yes. are admitting basically that they're that they're betas who are constantly obsessed with what women are going to do and what women are going to think. They're not self-oriented men. There's entire shows about this now. That's uh, it's beyond even uh, ideological and intellectual at this point. It's become physical, like the, the fake and fraud show of Miami. It's just all of the women run everything. The appearance yeah. is that these little dudes run it by being dramatic and throwing off these hoes or something like that, just to cause a scene and, and get views and clicks because people are sure. drama, drama, uh, drug addicts. But really, it's the women who run. It's all about what the women think and what the women want. It's become extremely blue pill if 2015 Manosphere was to analyze it. Like, it would have been a cl shut, uh, shut and closed case. Yeah, now, it's, like, it's insane. It's like, my, I, I'm so alpha, my my girlfriend lets me have my man cave, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like that's, exactly. That, that's, that's where it's at. Um, yeah, as men, we need to be aware of female sexual strategy to protect ourselves from it, right? With if you know, and to understand what a woman can do, what a woman is capable of. Yeah. But fundamentally, we also have to have that self awareness because that's how we grow as individuals. We only become better men when we understand what we want, how we operate, our blind sides. Like I talk a lot about Madonna whore complex. Yeah. Because that's a huge blind spot in guys. Guys, I see people in the manosphere talk all the time about, you know, how they want to fuck, you know, all these, they're, like, they're, they're fucking all these girls right now, but they want a virgin to marry. I'm like, you guys yeah. have some serious, serious problems. You have no idea how your own mind works. <laughs> I love it. I've been through these kind of, yeah. these kind of, um, I don't know what, personal struggles or just kind of like, you know, challenges in my own, in my own, how I'm living my own life, you know, even, re, even the past couple of years, things are really getting out of control as you, as I probably told you, like I was yeah. buying, you know, the three packs of plan B at one point, that was kind of like the final straw that I was like looking at it in my Amazon ordered list. I'm like, this yeah. is really fucked up. <laughs> like, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, there was a lot of fun to it, obviously, but it took time. And my, my nephew is really my blood nephews to really wake me up to like how serious sex was mm -hmm. and like just how high risk my behavior had become. 
for whatever reason, like the challenge of it, the fun, like the, the dramatics of it, it was this constant uh, stimulation game to keep having higher and higher highs. And I was like, this is going to blow up in my face with a kid who has a mother who's like some piece of shit off but, of a bar or Tinder or something. But this is why, you know, you're a leader, Anthony. This is why you're the president, right, of the Manosphere. I mean, you are, you are self-aware and you can see the things that you're doing and, and you engage with your actions and you reflect on them yeah. and, you, and you evolve, right? I mean, none of these people, these people are frankly devolving. Like yeah. they're, they're, they're becoming smaller and smaller, more and more caricatured. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because the, the ideology, like with any ideologues, the ideology becomes a constraining force on them. They can't, even if they wanted to deviate from it, they can't at this point, because yeah. then they'll be, you know, it's just like the Bolsheviks, you know, if you deviate from it, then you're the one, you know, you, you got to get yourself taken out because now you're yeah. no longer the real <laughs> red. Pill. Lose, their audiences, their fan base they are entirely dependent as creators, quote unquote, or authors or YouTubers or whatever the fuck you want to call them. They're dependent on, you're right, committing to that ideology for their fan base. And the minute they deviate from it, the, that fan base will turn on them like, like piranhas, mm -hmm. like little fucking chihuahuas, like eating them alive. Mm -hmm. And people get confused sometimes when I, I, I do an attack video exposing somebody or something. Oftentimes it's because that person attacks me first, first of all, but not always. Sometimes I'll initiate an attack on someone who I think needs to be a truth, an important truth needs to be spoken. Something needs to be exposed. I might have some fun with it with memes and shit, but almost always there's a serious component to it. And the memes are just tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm not, uh, I'm never beholden to my audience, no matter how, how big it gets. And the bigger it gets, the more tempting that becomes. And most people just sell out. It's rare mm -hmm. that someone like an Elliot Hulse, for example, uh, who's super savage and super authentic, gets that big with millions of fans and maintains his integrity and his uh the ability to author his own life in his own direction the audience becomes so big and so controlling that they want to they want to control you and i don't allow that at all i call the herd i mean yeah. I'm, I'm i'm fucking I'm, like grab the digital shotgun and just start blowing digital heads off because like i'm like I don't, I don't give a fuck like i'm gonna do i'm gonna evolve and pursue the truth and no one's gonna dictate to me what i think and what i believe and where i'm gonna take things and it's, it's a battle because people, the frauds don't have that. They actually, they like submitting to that, I think. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm like absolutely rebellious. Like I'm, I'm a warrior for the truth. And anybody who gets in the way of that will be uh, memed into oblivion. They like minimum. to submit to that like they submit to their women. Exactly. They're all run by their women. The the Rolos, the Donovans, the Sharp Mama, uh, the Ryans, the or Rihanna Stone. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all literally run by their women. It's really pathetic. And it's, uh, I've seen some people finally trying to help expose, I've been exposing that for a while with these guys, but it's, uh, it's really, it, it's hypocritical to such an insane nuclear level. Like these guys who pretend to be these red pill alpha males are super, super beta. They're in unhealthy, codependent, toxic relationships. It's obvious to anyone with game that from mm -hmm. an outside perspective, especially if you've met them and seen it up close and you can see the simping and all over the place. The Sharp Mama, for example, the Sharp Father, his whole channel now, if you look at it, it's nothing but his woman plastered all over it because she controls more. Every year that goes by, she controls more and more of the business. Mm -hmm. She's actually the uh, the COO or something. She's like a vice president of it, like legally. Mm -hmm. And she actually does all the artwork and the actual direction of the show. She's really the puppet master of this guy. Mm -hmm. And the same is true for every, pretty much every, it's going to differ in the specifics, right? The details. Sure. But even the fraud father, uh, Rollery, Rollery Tommaso is run by his wife. Mm -hmm. She stalks him. I know I've seen it in real life in my own home, how she does this like physically on his phone and stuff. It's so like, crazy. The guy's a complete beta. Like it's, it's, it's that retarded. Yeah. And rant. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's tragic. It's tragic. And hopefully yeah. we'll be able to continue to, to reveal these people. But I mean, they, they really are their own worst enemies. Yeah. Um, they, they can't help but make fools of themselves over and over again. So, yep. five dollars super chat from KS. Thank you, sir. My thing is, I have a core belief, however deep comfort for beliefs is unhealthy. Not sure what he means by this. Um, Who knows? KS, can you can you rephrase that? Yep. So that if 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 there if you're asking a question, that is if there's a if there's a question you want us to answer, I appreciate yep. the five dollars. Yeah, I do. Thank you. I'm going to use that on pina coladas when I become a simp in Miami for the women. <laughs> That's uh, 
that's that's what kind of I've realized too is that all the the fraud it's it's actually like multi-layered simping because yeah. these dudes will simp for these guys with super chats or whatever the money then gets funneled through youtube or whatever to the simp he then funnels the money to the chick sometimes we even have it on video a video evidence of this mm -hmm. they'll like use the super chat money to buy 200 dollars dinners for these chicks so really it's just this long train of simping and, and beta <laughs> beta male shit. it's amazing it's it's like just 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 go to only fans and cut the middleman out dude like yeah. you know make it more efficient yeah. Um, I want to talk more about sex. So mm -hmm. what have you seen lately? You got a lot of weird stuff on Twitter. People come at you. You have mm -hmm. a much bigger Twitter account than me. And I'm kind of jealous because it's a lot more fun. The bigger it gets, more fighting and more more shit goes on, more conflict. Mm -hmm. um, what have you seen lately with sex? Maybe with cheating in particular. I think you did a couple of newsletters on that. Uh, like, for example, should a man ever accept take a woman back after she cheats to put it uh, into yeah. a binary? Yeah, I, t I talked about this on Tony Tony Bruno's show, which is a great show, by the way. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of the guys watching already know that, but just want to give a little shout out to Tony there. Um, I I really riled up his his audience <laughs> um, with this one. So I don't like people have to understand. I don't like giving blanket answers to every single situation. I just don't like doing it because there's always context. I mean if there was cheating how did the cheating happen what other stuff was going on in the relationship it's obviously terrible it's obviously terrible and i can say yeah. personally i would never accept cheating in a relationship i wouldn't do, do you it. View, do you view it as abuse um like i view it as sexual abuse to be honest particularly because of the risk of stds but also emotional abuse uh, but yeah, i'm not I, just kind of context too like i get i get what you're saying no i i agree i agree it is it is i think it's equivalent to abuse even if even if that's not the exact term that i would use it's okay. it's essentially the same thing i mean I, like it's a, it's actually a good point you bring up i mean i hadn't thought of it in that capacity but um you know it it is a it is certainly emotionally harmful <laughs> and sexually harmful to the individual so yeah. i suppose it fits under the definition um the 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 reason i give this very very tiny caveat is that I do know in some situations, if you have a really unconscious relationship, like the guy is just totally, and I'll use the example of a woman cheating, right? Because we're talking to mostly an audience of men, that there is, the guy is, is just in denial about dynamics going on in the relationship. He's sort of not present, absentee isn't really engaging in in his in his marriage let's say it's a marriage um the woman's trying to get his attention everything's sort of shut down and then she's she's out and some guy takes attention to her and she has an affair and then maybe she feels terrible about it and comes to him and tells him that he had had an affair or maybe she's caught right um and everything comes out now, probably that's the end of the relationship. However, you can make an argument, um, and these couples frankly come to this conclusion themselves, which is that, well, the guy wasn't exactly being so great himself. He wasn't sexually cheating, but he was in his own way, maybe emotionally abusing the woman. And they weren't, and there was neither of them really knew how to get their needs met or communicate about what they wanted. And so the cheating ends up like blowing open that paradigm yeah. and then they're able to, from there, rebuild a relationship that inhibits that stuff from happening in the future. That, that does happen. I know a lot of people hate to hear this stuff and they, they freak out about it, but that stuff does happen. Um, and you also have to, these are, these sound like the exceptions that prove the rule because there are some cases where this will work out. And I agree with the mechanics at least of what you're saying if not the uh i mean it, it's so dicey staying in a relationship where a woman's cheated like yeah. it's super it's super high risk but i agree with what you're saying that the basic if i can paraphrase it or reframe it in my understanding and let me know if you agree it's like the relationship was already dead it's it was a zombie and yeah. now you just like you start shooting it and it's like you know there's fucking guts falling out it's like well it was already a fucking zombie like you were you had a dead bedroom for two fucking years you weren't getting laid she wasn't getting laid she was fucking depressed. You were fucking miserable. Like the whole thing was a shit show anyway, emotionally at least. 
Yes. And so what did you expect to happen? That's ex that's exactly right. And those are the contexts yeah. when this stuff occurs. Yeah. And I'll also just throw in here that other elements that contribute to the parties doing this reconciliation is they usually have kids, right? They yeah. usually have a lot of, you know, they're, they're heavily invested, you know, their assets are tied together. They have children together. Um, they have an incentive to fix things basically. And so look, I'll reiterate again. I personally do not like that. That stuff is made very clear from the beginning and I've never been unconscious enough. Yeah. You know, I, I, not, I was certainly not perfect, right? But I've never been that unconscious to have not sort of seen where things were going um, if my, with my current marriage. So I, I that stuff was always very clear from the beginning. My wife um, is probably more anti-cheating than I am. I mean, it's it's a real serious thing for her. And so is that a Polish thing or a Christian thing or? Um, I think it. I think it's more to do with some other things in her background, basically that, okay. um, you know, family, et cetera, that she, that she has like a very negative, uh, association with it. I mean, it's a bad thing. I don't yeah. have that level of negative association. I'm like, yeah, it's bad to be honest. Like if, if it were to happen to me, I'd obviously be upset and I would end the relationship, yeah. but I wouldn't have this sort of like, fuck you. You're the worst person. I would honestly be like, man, you really fucked up. Like you really fucked this up. Yeah. You know, it'd be more like disappointment. Yeah. I, I went I through it myself back in the day and that was part of uh, the experience, like the major disappointment. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's disappointment. And it's, and it's also like a level of you ruin this for yourself because, you know, we had a really good thing and you, and you just, you destroyed it. So, um, yeah. I know I'll be fine, but you know, it's your loss. Like that's how I view it versus the more victim, element to it where it's like you yeah. ruin everything you know i can't like i'll never get over this you know whatever i'm not going to give them that much power but we got a done super chat by the way from stephen pope five dollars thanks bro i promise not to spend it on pina coladas for fat women <laughs> anthony will you please do a show with pat and tate i think he means andrew tate mm -hmm. i think it would be an extremely interesting conversation i do too that'd be pretty cool yeah, I think it would be very interesting. You know, what, I, what I'll say, and, and I've, I've talked to some clients about this stuff. Um, I don't think, I, Andrew has a completely different philosophy towards these things than I do, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that he's wrong. I just think there's a, it depends on what you, what, what is your relationship to um, women and, and sort of, having children, et cetera. Um, there are two kinds of successful relationships. And one is very psychological and deep and intimate. It's kind of more like classical, I suppose you could say, um, you know, modern Christian kind of relationship, right? There's a lot of clearing it, like, you know, getting closer and closer to each other and clearing out all your crap with each other. And, you know, you kind of get yourself revealed to the other person. Okay. Whatever. That's the sort of relationship that, that I ascribe to. And those are the sort of women I like to date, you know, that I could develop that sort of deeper intimacy. It's important to me. There are some guys who just don't really care about that. It doesn't matter at all. Um, and the, when these guys are more powerful, they're what they're looking for is they're looking for a girl who's going to be attractive and feminine and not drain their energy. Right. And if you're a guy and that's what you're looking for, you're not looking to get like really close and deep and intimate with a girl, then, you know, that like, I, I think that Andrew's approach to things is completely, completely correct. You know, and I actually think in those for, for, for his value system, for his value system, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, he's. I, I don't. I don't know exactly the details or anything, but I do think he has a couple of different girls who have his children, right? Um, I think allegedly, I allegedly. allegedly, allegedly. I think I heard something. Yeah. About it. I don't know. Allegedly, right? But the point is that, like, if that was how I viewed things, he's going about it completely the right way. You know, yeah. I actually tell wealthy clients who want a lot of children and just do not like they're focused on their business. They're focused on other stuff. They don't, they don't care about having that kind of deeper relationship. I'll even tell them, I'll say, look, like, 
you probably should not get married or, you know, and, and I think it's totally reasonable for you to be open to dating multiple women, having, you know, multiple women that have your children. Like I know some of the, some Christian people here will not like that because, yeah. and, and, you know, look, I get it. I don't, I, I have Tate my, is like, Tate is like the devil to them. They hate Tate. Look, I have my own views on things and it's probably more aligned with these other people, but I also know where somebody else is at. Like, what is the point in me trying to tell this person that they're yeah. wrong? It's just not my life path. It's their life path. They, they could fucking care less too. Like it's yeah, they're, they, they're... They, could care, they could care less. And I, and I think that this yep. sort of stuff is really, it's unproductive and it actually makes, it makes them just like, have less respect for you. I think it comes across as desperate for you to try to force your values on other people. Like mm -hmm. you should let them express, like, I mean, look, I'm not tolerant of a lot of the degenerate shit going on today. Um, but a large part of this stuff and the reason it's become such a problem is because this isn't like back in the eighties where you had, you know, a couple of, you had like a gay community and they go out and they do their thing. And that was sort of it. And they were, they had their own little red light district. Now it's like they're coming after your five-year-olds. It's a very different situation yeah. and they're doing it through sneaky means. It's totally different, totally different shit versus, um, you know, some guy who's got money wants to live his life in a different way. He wants to live it, frankly, like a lot of powerful men throughout history have lived it. Bingo. Well, you know, you got a you got a problem with that? Go fuck yourself. Honestly, like he's not like there's no reason for anybody to be criticizing him in his actions. Playboys and alpha males are a story as old as time. These Casanovas yeah. and whatever the specifics of it are. Yeah, I have no problem. I love Tate. I think he's fucking great. I don't agree with everything that he does, but I understand yeah. him. Even when he, you know, he he gets along, for example, with like the fake and fraud, uh, you know, podcasters. I don't really give a fuck. Tate's not stupid. He knows what they are. He sure. just wants to make a bunch of money. And I don't really, I, yeah, business decision. Yeah. yeah. And I don't really fucking care. I'd rather he gets, because I like him and I think he's a pretty legit dude. He's a fucking legit alpha male, not these, these phonies that fuck old fat women. And he actually has game, is actually strong, is actually masculine. And so I'm like, I'd rather he get these simps money than these pina colada fucking simps that buy pina coladas for all these fucking Miami skanks. Yeah. I'm like, the money's going somewhere. It's either going to this fat, green haired skank in Miami. Or it goes to Andrew Tate and his brother. I wanted to go to Andrew Tate and his brother. And if they're going to be hanging out with these guys, then who gives a fuck? Whatever. And and let me just also say this. I think it's a it's a good like tying everything together. People need to focus on who is the real enemy right now. Like, this yeah, it's is, not Tate. And not it's Tate. not Tate. It's not Tate. I I get really I find it really really tedious when people get butt hurt about this kind of stuff. It's yeah. like, focus your attention on what really fucking matters right now. It's not Andrew Tate having a couple of different girls that he hooks up with. That is that is literally the least fucking important thing in the world. Learn how to build alliances and focus on what really matters. Andrew Tate is not coming for your children. He's not trying to groom your daughters. Bingo. Not. So. Yep. Yeah, he's not trying to force, you know... Uh kufid shit in your arm and he's not trying to bankrupt he's, your country he's not trying to bankrupt your country and genocide your future children and obliterate your currency to hyperinflation there's a lot bigger fucking problems out in the world he's not a feminist trying to you know chop your balls off with castration laws like there's yeah. all kinds of crazy shit in the world and yeah he's not part of the problem i think he's on the side of i think tate's on the right side of history even oh, if he's this kind of playboy alpha male uh loves power and money good for him and, and look, and look, I'm, I'll just speak very plainly about it. I mean, Andrew was was there for me when most of the manosphere was pussing out yeah. um, after my arrest. And so, look, I'm a loyal guy. I understand loyalty. And um, I'm not going to frankly tolerate anybody trashing him. So, yeah, good. Yeah, fuck yeah. You can move on to some other subjects if you have more time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm good. To, I'm good till uh, about two o'clock. Okay, cool. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, let me let me go take a piss real fast. Okay, yeah, go for it. All right, boys, we uh, just got me for now. Let's look at this red pill chameleon, Jennifer Molesky. I saw someone bitching in the chat that she was a chameleon. 
chameleon in the house. Of course, the dude has a pig uh, fucking face. This is, it's always this, right? It's always some retard. In the meantime, you guys should check out uh, his website, which is here. PatStebman.com. Definitely check it out. It's pretty dope. I have heard a lot of good things, like I said, about his uh, master class, which is down here. And I can personally attest to his coaching, which you can apply for a consult here. And of course, I'm going to sell you guys some more shit while we're waiting. So buy some hats. Uh, we do also have, and we're in the process of putting up the uh, animals, the uh, stuffed uh, pigs and the bears and shit. You've probably seen. I got a couple around me. There's like one up in the background. Uh, when you guys buy these hats, it supports the channel. Uh, it's nothing major. It's much more important to you know be a member at 21university.com. Uh, attend the 21 convention, you know, go to our events, 21 summit, 21 convention, patriarch, 22 convention, all this kind of stuff. Uh, we appreciate it big time. As you guys know, a few months ago, we were booted out of the YouTube partner program banned temporarily and took a bunch of money. We ended up getting it back, but your support matters. Welcome back, Pat. I was just slinging hats in the meantime. Nice. Yeah. No simping. Don't simp for the frauds, but you can simp for 21 studios. 100%. <laughs> Yep. It's not simping, it's supporting, right? Exactly, exactly. It's, and look, actually, you know, wearing these hats around is a is a statement. It's a statement. Oh yeah. I mean, um, you know, you're you're creating tension when mm -hmm. you do something like that. So it's definitely not a ballless move <laughs> to buy yeah. one of these hats and, and go around with them. Dude, people love this hat. I mean, oh, well, I just got this one new, but all the hats like it. You know, make women great again, 100% toxic masculinity. I wear them to, especially to the political events like CPAC, mm -hmm. for, you know, Trump Speaks and Ron DeSantis and all these people. And these people in the hallways, it just stopped me to take pictures. Like, they love it. They're, I, I had Nigel Farage. He loved make women great again. So, mm -hmm. that, you know, right out loud. I took a picture with him. I got to meet him and talk, talk to him a little bit. And it, it, you'd be surprised how receptive a lot of... Uh, probably not like the lefty Democrats, obviously, but a lot of Republicans and conservatives and libertarians, they love this kind of stuff. I think I'm, I've been thinking lately, not to go on too much of a tangent, but a little bit, that all the, the heat from the federal government on the Manosphere, whether it's Department of Homeland Security, um, special agents like Amru, Amru Fratel, uh, yeah. infiltrating the Manosphere to subvert it and destroy it uh, with this podcast or the Secret Service putting out a huge document about it just a couple days ago. I think they're terrified of the manosphere positively influencing conservative politics and pushing it to be more pro-man, pro-masculinity, pro-family. Because a lot of that's just talking points that are very minimal right now in conservative politics. Yeah. Whereas the manosphere is like gung-ho, like be alpha, the better parts of it anyway. Don't be a stupid fucking beta. Be a fucking man. Be a patriarch. Be a leader. Don't apologize for your masculinity. It's okay to be a woman. It's okay to be feminine. It's okay to be submissive. There's a lot of messages that we have that they don't, but they're receptive to it. And my theory is that this is terrifying to deep state elements, because if we can push these people to be much more aggressively pro-man and pro-family and pro-masculinity and pro-femininity and women, uh, that could change the course of American history. That's what I'm trying to do with 21 and my wing of what I do. Yeah, it's basically rolling back um, the last 60 years of propaganda. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, what it, that's what it is. Yeah. And that's how they got their stranglehold on this country. I mean, yeah. they they have gradually. I mean, everybody with a brain knows that feminism isn't pro women; it's anti family. Yeah, um, it's you know, and that and that the people who are pushing feminism are actually men who profit from the destruction of the family. Yeah. So th this whole thing. I mean, when you have alpha men, you have feminine women. That's just the reality. Femininity dies in the absence of alpha men. Yep. Um, yep. And so, yeah, 100% it's a threat to them. It's a total threat because these guys, alpha guys, right? Um, I don't want to abuse the term, but it's just like men with sovereignty and agency. I do. Do you support they, make, make men alpha? <laughs> <again>? <laughs> I love no, it, man. But, but they're, that, is the, that is what America was founded on. Yeah, you know, those are the guys you can't actually have a republic unless you have men like that, because yep. otherwise you just have a bunch of, of serfs. Yep. Essentially, they're not men. I mean, I've, I've made this point before that they restricted it to men who own property because that was a very important thing. It wasn't like even 
like, you know, obviously excluding all the, you know, the, the racist elements, whatever, at the time period. I mean, at if you were a man who owned property, like you, you couldn't even be a white guy who, who didn't own property and be able to vote at the beginning of the Republic. And yeah. I think that there's good reasons for that, because if you own property, it's like you have a stake. Yeah. You, know? um, you got skin in the game. Yeah. This country was founded on small businesses. Right. I mean, that's yeah. what it is. It's fa- small, you know, family farms, small businesses. That was America. And all men who have that stuff, who are the heads of their independent households and heads of their own businesses, those men are able to think because they are our micro leaders. They can all together muse together about which direction the country should take. When yeah. you have a bunch of like fucking losers who yeah. who own nothing and be in our you know will be happy, right? Mm-hmm. Who are who are just constantly indulging in propaganda. You don't have a you don't have a country anymore. Yeah, I think yeah. universal suffrage is a total failure. Like. Like I'm not, I'm not in favor yeah. of discriminating against Americans to vote based on the way they're born that much. I'm not male, female, obviously black, white, Asian, whatever the fuck, none of that. I'm not in favor of any of that crap, even the male, female stuff. And mm-hmm. I think that there's a lot of negative consequences to women voting that people didn't consider when the 19th amendment was passed and all that, you know, for better, or for worse, they just didn't, it was just kind of ignored. It was a death of equal rights and responsibilities, duties. But I do think that universal suffrage, um, and isolation as a concept is totally retarded. And the more percentage of the population you have vote, the more retards you have voting, the more sheep. They just do what the fuck, whatever they're told, whatever the propaganda says, just like whether it's Kufid, Ukraine, BLM, Antifa, feminism, they're literally, they're more like, uh, we call them sheep in my opinion, because they really are more, more herd-like, more animal-like uh, than human, at least psychologically. They really can't think and act for themselves. They have you to know, act in a group. It's interesting because what is going on right now it is really it's a kind of like a mass scale mk ultra like a trauma trauma based mind control i mean a lot of these people they've had trauma and that's that's built in that's by design right and so then they um you know they so they're looking to authority figures to save them and then that's what these sort of celebrity media stuff that gets propped up is and then they become addicted to looking at what the authority figure tells them, even though it actually just causes them more pain, they get more and more abused. This programming only breaks after, you know, unfortunately people can talk about, oh, uh, well, you know, love will break the programming. The reality is that pain breaks programming. These people yeah. are not gonna wake up until, you know, family members start to die because of certain things and because, um, and because they're, you know, their their entire investments are completely wiped out. Um, well, I hear playing soccer is the number one way to get a heart attack now. So yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Twenty five year old soccer player. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's very interesting about that. Who would have known that playing soccer causes heart attacks? It's, yeah, and, and just in the last yeah. year too. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's become it's become quite a quite an issue. So yeah, this the manosphere. I mean, just to bring it back to the point. I mean, the manosphere is grassroots men take back their agency and then when men take back their agency they create this protective bubble for women to take back their feminine agency yeah and then these bubbles become extremely resistant to the state itself i mean i take your point Mm -hmm. about about universal suffrage and without kind of going into it i'll just say that in in many ways, that issue is mitigated if you had a healthy family structure, because we all know statistically that women vote with their husbands. So if you yep. have people getting married, and you know it, it may it may become an erroneous point at the end of it. This Bingo. is this is the most important thing. I mean, what what twenty one convention is doing? You know, the yes. preeminent one in, in the world, and now it's spreading across country to country to country. It is grassroots inoculation against cabal propaganda yep. they, they can't have it i mean honestly you I, I know that you're you're savvy and you're you're prepped about this stuff but i'm i'm actually surprised they haven't done some false flag thing yet with it because oh it my is, event well, i mean like a like a bad false flag thing oh. you know, like I don't know if they're going to do some sort of like shooting or something like that. You know, I, it's it's honestly. Why do you think I have so many guns at the event? Yeah, no. You, you have to be totally suicidal to try anything stupid at 21. Yeah. Like you will, someone will shoot you basically. 
and that's yeah. by design. It's a, it's a, um, what do they call it? It's not intimidation. It's a, like a warning. There's a fucking word for it. I can't think of the fucking word right now. Deterrence. The deterrence. Yeah. Bingo. Duh. It's a deterrence. And that's why that's part of why 21 is both the greatest and the safest event in the manosphere mm -hmm. in the world for men, because there's a bunch of guns at it. Like for, I mean, in 2018, we counted like 45, yeah. uh, different people carrying handguns in the room. And this is, that's what we could, that's just what we could know what we, what we knew. <laughs> Yeah. There was probably that event was pretty big. That like had like 230 people at it or so. Mm -hmm. It was bigger than usual. But there's probably another 20 to 30 handguns in the room that we didn't even know about. Some guys like Tony carry two guns. I yeah. just carry I carry one. I keep it simple. And we have, you know, law enforcement are higher. So like yeah, it's someone true. at some point could try that, but whoever it, it is, is they're just yeah, they're just gonna die. Like and, and that's actually I, I didn't even think about that, but I I do remember yeah. that from the convention. Yeah, it's it's that 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 wouldn't that wouldn't get anywhere. Yeah. Um, I mean it would hit the news and be a thing, but I don't really I'm not worried about it. I care about people's safety, the people yeah. who are innocent, which is everybody in the room who's not a false flag piece of shit. And you know, if I have to, I'll do it myself too. I'm mm. not afraid to uh to take out to to do what needs to be done to protect the safety of my customers and myself and my friends and my speakers. And that's really rare for a conference organizer to actually carry a handgun. And while I'm not licensed security or anything like that, I don't need to be to right. stop a, fel a violent felony in action. Sure. And I'll do it, if I have to, I'll fucking do it myself. Yep. And all these frauds have none of the balls to do that. They will never say that. They would never do it. They would never carry. And even the other Manosphere events that I have less of a problem with back in the day, like there was Man in Demand a couple years ago, 2016. There was the PUA Summit. There was a dating conference up in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been like fucking 10 of them. But none of them were pro Second Amendment, pro gun, pro safety, all that shit. They had no care about any of that stuff. These fans for years would be like, hey, bring 21 to California or New York. And I'm like, never, because I can't carry a gun and I ain't doing it where I can't carry a gun unless it's impossible. Like, uh, you know, London and Sweden, foreign yeah. country uh, at that point, I'm like, whatever. But that's why we've only had 21 in America in Florida and Texas, mm -hmm. because I always carry a handgun when I'm in America. And if I can't, then I ain't fucking doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. And rant. No, yeah. I mean, so the manosphere is, it's, it, it is this, it's a, it's very, very important. It's very, very important what's being built here. And yeah. I actually think, you know, I, I'm, I'm an optimist. I'm a realist. You know, I, I'm, I know what's going on um, yeah. in detail, but, and I know how bad it is. And I know what the plans are to make it work. But I'm an optimist. I, I see people waking up. I mean, it's, we get frustrated with the sheep. But it's a gradual process. More and more, every single one of these little turns they take, more and more people get sifted out, thrown out of their of their little you know merry go round. Yeah. And um, in this community is here to pick up many of these guys mm -hmm. and dust them off and and get them back in the fight on the right side of things. I mean, we will take back the country and gradually the entire Western world. And I have no doubt about mm -hmm. that. I mean, we are going to have some pain ahead, no question, but we will get through it. And but, but to do this, men need to get their balls back and women need to get their eggs back, if that would be a way to put it. <laughs> and the manosphere, I think, is key to doing this. And the political conservatives and shit, even the most hardcore ones are not they don't have the like they don't have the time, attention and intellectual background to do it. They're just, they, they get the Tucker Carlson's and uh, some of the people, they get that there's like a masculinity problem in America and it has links to family and stuff like that, but they're not really, they don't see the big picture of how it's fundamental the prop, this problem is and how it's driving political issues like uh, that we've seen in recent years and, you know, even Kufit stuff. Well, you know, th it's been called the gynocracy, right? I mean, even in the conservative circles, while the left has certainly been the one that's pushed this paradigm it's the cons the conservatives are of course only just a few steps behind and they're mostly operating under you know um superficialities right yeah like like if and michael foster talks about this all the time but i mean love that guy amazing yeah, he's amazing amazing um when you talk about okay like well you know we need more more christian christian families and americans become more christian it's like okay well what does that mean what does that mean? Does that mean because a lot of what's going on in these churches are completely feminized? I mean, yep. I'm a Christian, but I see what's what's going on with that. It's tough to find a church. The cuck. That you don't have, yeah, you don't have a cuck pastor. And like the stuff that they're teaching is in, <laughs> in many ways completely, you know, 
I would say inverted in many ways from from what's supposed to happen. Sometimes they mean well, sometimes they don't. But either way, they're both misled, and you have weak leadership. In, if it is it even male leadership, it's it's weak, and it's um, it's run by women, whether whether physically run by a female preacher, which is becoming a thing, a pastor, or it's just a beta male cuck pastor who's run by the women in the church or his wife or whatever. Yeah, which is the opposite of what Christians should be promoting and should be doing and have for a long fucking time. So yeah, it's it's sick. It's like run by pastor, you know, Jack Murphy's, you know, basically at this point. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's a fucking guy. Yeah, but yeah, it's uh at, at best Republicans promote like beta male masculinity. Yeah. Like how can how can you be a better slave to your woman and your wife? And it's like, man, you're not even close, bro. Like. I get that you think there's a, they have at least a little bit of you know uh, lip service to masculinity in some cases, but yeah, it's really I think the man I really do think this is one major possibility of the federal government being hostile to the manosphere is they want to they want to nip this in the bud before we can influence them much more so. Yeah, but they, dude, can't going, stop it, but they can't stop it. It's yeah, it's they pushed it too far, and there's there people are organically having responses to it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, good fucking luck, good fucking luck feds. I mean, these, these guys are, they're not, they're not gonna, they're not on the right side of history and time's, time's running out. And I'm not I'm saying also, I'm in, I'm insanely persistent personally, as you, yeah. as you know, Pat. So like, I'm, I'm going to just keep, uh, like the letter that I'm doing, I just kind of the beginning of uh, other legal mechanisms and put, you know, buttons and pushing yeah. and I'm just, you know, I'm relentless. And uh, they should be worried because not physically or anything like that. No, no, not physically. But but legally and and uh, morally, we'll say, I'm an expert at at making people upset and angry and, and ruining uh, their daily day to day life. It just yeah, you know, I mean, causing trouble. What I'm trying to say is they're just not going to be able to succeed in manipulating and threatening people. Like people are exactly. Yeah, that's that's all we're that's all we're saying here. That's why I like guys like Michael Foster is like the guy is a devout. Uh, a really devout Christian and faithful to his God and his and his religion and his beliefs, and that means, in my view, he's not, and in my my honest interpretation of the guy is he can't be compromised. Yeah. And I'm the same way, gung ho for my beliefs and, and all that, and especially for the manosphere and its importance. And you can't bribe me, you can't threaten me, you can't intimidate me, you can't uh, compromise me in any kind of fucking way. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like I care about what's true. I care about what's real. I care about masculinity. I care about family. I care about patriarchy care about women being women, like all this stuff. And there's literally nothing you can do short of throwing me in jail that's going to stop me. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And yeah, yeah I'm, not some, I'm not some mass shooter or something crazy like that. But yeah, I'm just super, 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 super persistent at what I care about. And I never stop. Like, well, like, a, like, a, like an energizer bunny. Yeah. I mean, right. violence isn't the answer. And, and, you know, it's not necessary anyway. I mean, the idea is yeah. just to on momentum on their own. And, you know, there's only so many people who can try to stamp it out. It's not like there's like a hundred of us. There's millions, millions. Another, another theory, by the way, the Manosphere does have millions, but another theory I've read is that a lot of the federal government attacks in the Manosphere, whether it's Secret Service or Department of Homeland Security or any of this crap, or even the infiltrators, a lot of it apparently could be to just drum up money for like certain departments. So it's almost like they're, they're trying mm -hmm. to use the Manosphere as like a... Just like a money, like oh, look at this nasty thing. We need more money, like a fund, like a fund, sort of like a funding source, basically. So maybe it's yeah. something stupid like that. I don't they know. need to fulfill the quota, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, that's possible as well. Although I do think that there's probably a there's probably a, a mixed influences with it because yeah. it yeah. it is just I'm just sorry I'm plugging in my computer. Um, it's, okay. it's just because of the the downstream impact that it that it has. Yeah. Uh, just, there's one other like little quick quick comment on this um because you mentioned the sort of beta male like the conservative sort of beta male oh yeah of doing things yep. well the, the issue with it even if you were to say that they're in superficially you know an alliance right that they would push back against some of the more you know, degen things is that it actually is you can't even hold that line because the next generation like the children who grew up under those dads are have not grown up with a strong father and because yep. they haven't grown up with a strong father they lack strength in the sense of themselves and so as a result they're really malleable to propaganda and so what ends up happening is that the next generation 
goes that way. And in fact, the best example of this is the boomer generation, because the boomer generation did, wasn't like a degen generation overall, but it did have that first, I mean, I know like all the stuff at the sixties, but, but what I mean is generally, okay, they had that little party phase, but then they all got married and they had their kids. Um, the difference was just that, whereas the prior generation was filled with tough, strong men, that generation was filled with a lot of these beta males, but they had nuclear families. But you see what happened is that you remove that from a generation and then the, the, their children and then certainly their children's children's are now like cat boys and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy shit. No, I agree. I agree with that. I'm not uh, I don't want to misconstrue my beliefs or misrepresent them. Like I'm not in favor of giving these people a free pass because they give cheap lip service to yeah, a little bit exactly. of masculinity. I'm not into the same team bullshit. Like, don't attack them. Like, no, that guy's a that guy's a beta male loser. I right. don't care. I don't care what he votes for, what he likes. Like, I, I, I'm gonna call what I see, like a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the it has downstream consequences to their children. Like, hundred percent, they just end up promoting what was you know radically left twenty years ago, and yeah. that's like normal now. Like, it's it's just super retarded. To the to the credit too of Christians, though, I, I keep pointing this out lately is you know, they were really worried about the slippery slope. In the I think late '90s and 2000s with gay marriage and stuff like this, and they're gonna come after the kids. They come after the kids, and it's like, yeah, you know, these people fucking called it the Pat Buchanan's kind of stuff. They did call it, and I'll also make this other point, you know, because in case it was we were coming across as being a little too harsh, they the Christian community still remains the strongest bastion of you know any sort of masculinity in the country. I mean, there is not. Like if you go into the secular world, it's it's way worse overall. I mean, you're an exception, Anthony, like a glaring yeah. exception to that as an individual. If Thanks. you were to if you were to look at like the demographic of atheists or something like that, you're not. Oh, they're super beta and retarded. Yeah, super, super. So I mean, the the, yeah. the Christians, even for their flaws, I mean, th there's there's absolutely no reason. Like a lot of the criticism here is constructive. You know, it's yeah. Like there is going to be, I believe, a very positive. Um, shift within that and i think a lot of the pushback is going to come from within churches but it's first going to be men taking back their churches you know it's yeah so anyway well it's men taking back their balls in the first place man yeah. i mean it's it's really a it's a personal and family thing from there you get communities and churches and local governments and state governments and the federal government uh that, in my opinion the smallest polity is the family the smallest yes. political entity is, is literally the family so and i'll just make a point which i'm sure the you know, the people in the chat already familiar with, but you really, part of, part of the issue with this sort of beta man thing is that you can't as a, as a non beta, right. You can't build alliances with them because they're too weak and you can't trust them. Yeah. Even if you wanted to rely on them and they say, yeah, you know, I agree with what you're saying. You know, even if they would tell you that, we'll tell you that privately, but then are they going to back you up publicly? No, they go they, silent. They don't, they go silent. They Dude, go I met silent. a, I met a guy at um, a Republican event last year in Orlando. I go to some of these local ones sometimes, sometimes the film, sometimes to do, you know, volunteer or whatever. Just kind of, I do what I can to try to push them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. My hats, my hats and shirts alone kind of move the needle just walking around because they're so triggering and they're so obvious. Uh, the shirt, for example, the features patriarchy. I wear these to like, to like, you know, kind of moderate Republican events and people are like, oh, like they fucking see it. But anyway, I met this guy with a daughter. He had, he said he had an 18 year old daughter. She wasn't there and she was about to go to college at one of the big ones in Florida, the big universities. And I'm like, man, have you thought about just like keeping her home and, you know, helping her find a husband and build a family instead of going to college? Like, that's like a pretty good option. And he's just like, oh, oh well, no, no, she already got accepted. Da, 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 da. And you yeah. could tell this guy, like it, it really shook him that that would, and he, and this guy too, by the way, was familiar with a lot of the issues of family court divorce court for men so he wasn't like just some total normie like yeah. he was he knows you i would say he's if uh incidentally familiar with some what we'd call manister wisdom that these things are dangerous he'd been through yeah. divorce court himself but the idea that his daughter would do like not go to college after graduating high school and stay home and he would help her find a husband and build a family this was like alien to him yeah w what's been normal for like so what hundreds thousands of years in some cases depending on what you want to, what areas of the world history and look at, especially America though. And like, I'm just some, you know, 33 year old guy, like, Hey man, like, have you, you ever thought of that? And he's like, Arr. he got really, he didn't get mad, but he just got very triggered by it. It was very, it was visceral. And it's like, dude, this is the state of the Republican party. Like you're going to send your daughter. And I, I went into it too. I'm like, dude, your daughter's going to get on Tinder, Bumble. She's going to slut it up. I was pretty, I was pretty ruthless with this shit. I actually said slut it up. 
this guy's yeah. face very very casually like i'm not i wasn't attacking i'm like dude it's no it's like, like you, do it. you, know, you just make these little sides with it yeah, yeah yeah i'm like dude it's a shit show man like she's a, she could easily ruin her life or some dude will and like that's just how it goes man mm -hmm. and, and it's just uh it's just a little story that i have in my in, in my head and I, it's hard to forget it because it's like i know that this is so common and this is a guy who had been through divorce court and knows that things are slanted against men and shit like that it's even worse when you get it when you have these guys who are and the, these other boomers and shit this guy was a boomer too he's probably like 60 or something well you know you make a really good point with it i mean unfortunately there's only partial deprogramming for a lot of people it's like so something happens to them and so then they realize that some aspect of the structure and the cultural you know milieu is flawed and so okay well we need to change that but they won't take that leap to say well why did that thing even come about to begin with I'm like how much further do you have to go until you get to the root of it i mean you know when you got the when you got the hydra you cut off one head I mean, there's there are multiple others. You have to you have to get to the core of the entire thing. Otherwise, it's, yeah. it's you know you haven't you haven't solved the problem, and that's what you could understand. It's like, okay, well, we need to fix divorce court, right? Like that's the problem that that this shouldn't happen. Okay, but then you know his daughter goes to the college and then gets brainwashed, and yeah, um, then down the road she gets married. Does she do the same thing her mother did to him? Right. Yep. Same thing again. Like the problem, fundamental problem wasn't d dealt with. Yep. Uh, so. I think it's like these people, it's not even that, even with the, sh the sheepest of the sheep, not even this guy we're talking about, but much worse sheep. It's like they don't, it's not that they lack the ability to think, it's that they choose not to think. And it, 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 and it's, there's fear is a big part of it. That's what shuts, you know, the mind killer. But it's like they, it, it does require multiple layers of thinking. So I understand there's, I've been trying to wrap my head around this lately, but I get why they choose to not think and choose to be lazy because of the fear where it's intimidating to think in multiple layers at a time, because then you're responsible for the outcome that you have the conclusion. And then you have to hold it up in public, right? Like you're talking about these guys who agree with you in private. Then when it comes public time, whether it's at a Republican event, a political meeting for your community, a church, they don't want to speak up. You know, they don't want to say anything offensive. Michael Foster, I remember in 2020 at the Patriarch Convention, he was talking about how he goes to Christian events and unlike 21 convention and 21 summit, they actually give him a list of shit that he can't talk about. Uh, hell, sex before marriage, virginity, like just, these are just for him would be fairly simple topics that he wasn't even going to talk about. And then he was like, oh, I'm definitely talking about these now. Yeah. They're, trying to, they're, they're trying to forbid these issues from getting, from getting focused on, understood and resolved. Yeah. And I'm, you know, figure speech with thank God, then like him still exists pushing back like that. I want to make a comment too that I've been critical of Christianity lately from a philosophic perspective on my Twitter. That's really pissed off a lot of people. Really got butt hurt. These aren't new opinions I have. These opinions are like ten years old. Um, I just don't talk about them all the time. But I would, I'm, as an atheist and objectivist, I would love if all my neighbors were like hardcore, devout Christians. Even I don't agree with the fundamentals of what drives the philosophy at a very deep philosophic level. The values and the uh, what they should be focused on are, are really good, and I have like no problem with that at all. It's why I, I lie of an alliance with uh, you know a lot of Christians and stuff. And this is confusing to these lazy beta males who don't want to think. They're like, but you don't like Christianity. I'm like, dude, you're stupid. Like, these people are fucking great. I don't agree with the totality of what they believe, but as far as like the top 80% of it is fucking super savage. I love it. And I wish more people, I wish more Christians were like the Michael Fosters of the world and the Tanner Guzzies and the Noahs and the Jeff Youngers and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, men with balls, you know, that's fucking so fantastic to me. Yeah, the world's the world's a dangerous place, man. Whether it's genocidal maniacs or people wanting to like, you know, fuck your daughter's life up or something and and make her a hoe. Like, there's so much, you know, from A to Z. There's so much, you know, dark negative shit that can happen. Uh, it's good that people have a philosophy that guides them towards like positivity and truth and life and family. Uh, that to me it means a lot, and I like I like that's what I like about the real Christians, not these fake, you know, Easter Easter worshippers. I call them. Yeah, I mean, and look, I'm not, I'm not a, a pastor, and so I don't, you know, want to claim certain things that are maybe outside of my element of expertise. But sure, I mean, there's been this massive feminization of Jesus, you know, yeah. as sort of like, you know, 
like he was just super compassionate to everybody well he was compassionate but he was also fucking fierce i mean he went in the temple and kick over fucking tables and stuff he'd rebuke people to their face and tell them you're you're basically a fucking retard i mean in parlance of that time period <laughs> he'd do it over and over again i mean you know if you're willing to to you're so firm in your own beliefs and your message that you're willing to get yourself crucified to prove a point uh that's not a pussy right yeah. that's not somebody who would be afraid to the, you know to call it like it was yeah. and what we have right now is that well women you know i talked about earlier in here the masculine and feminine healing i mean jesus was both my perspective he embodied both of them and he understood the context of using them you know people who were being unf maybe like judge when excessively to give them the compassion they needed that, to be able to heal and then would throw the, his own judgment on people who deserved it and who were hiding behind their moral superiority. Yeah. But women, this sort of feminist rot that's infiltrated the entire culture, women don't like being called out. Yeah. It's a feral sort of dynamic because it, it hits right to their core issues. They don't want to have the self-awareness. They don't want to they don't want any of that stuff. And so <clears throat> consequently, Christianity, in order to evolve, to survive in this sort of anti-male, hostile environment, necessarily, you, you could say, became more and more feminized so that it could continue to operate as this sort of controlled opposition. So it's like, oh, see, we're still Christian. Well, go back to a church 60 years ago and see what they were saying compared yeah. to that it's not not the same christianity it's just window dressing and so anyway yeah i, I agree with your point too by the way i want to move on to sex in a minute uh before we wrap up the sh end up the show but uh you mentioned that uh the christianity is still like a bastion of christianity and the churches and stuff a lot of them are still bastions of masculinity at least compared to the rest of the culture and i think that's pretty accurate i think in particular christianity whatever the denominations are and all these which is kind of interesting to me, the the political, the politics of the denominations, how mm -hmm. they get along and fight with each other. But they're basically a competing power structure that the deep state and the feminists and whoever else, they want to like infiltrate it and undermine it and destroy it. They yes. want to like they want to take it over like a parasite or, or just abolish it completely. Mm -hmm. And they at minimum, whether you agree with Christianity or not, like they see it and it is a competing organization for people's belief systems and communities and how they organize and what they're going to vote for. And like, it's a threat to the establishment that wants to continue dominating everything and taking it over into this degenerate, uh, you know, hyper liberal shithole. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. I hope these people succeed. They, they, their fight, the Michael Fosters and whatnot at the, and the Reverend, the Jesse Peterson's yeah, it's sick what a lot of it's become, but yeah. I do want to move on to yeah, sex. Yeah. Yeah. So one of your newsletters, I just opened it. It's one of the few I didn't get to opening uh, on, the, on my, usually open all of them and kind of scan through them. This one is how often should you be having sex? So I do want to talk about this question in particular, sex in general for a bit. Uh, my answer to your question of your newsletter, by the way, since you, you emailed it to me personally, right? With the newsletter. <laughs> um, my answer is that, you know, in a relationship in particular, you should always be having as much sex as the man wants. He should be leading this. Mm -hmm. And if it's not about dictating it. It's more about the man being the sexual leader and he, he gets what he wants because he's the alpha and he's the dominant in the relationship. And this is how things generally naturally need to be. And if they're not, it's going to be, it's just going to be a slip and slide to hell. Like it's just going to yeah. fucking fall apart. So some people think this is like, you know, this is abusive and you're domineering and this is nonsense. Like women, women might want to fuck, you know, less than you, more than you, but as far as what actually happens, it needs to be you directing course of it. And it also too, I've been thinking that if a woman doesn't want to fuck whenever you want to fuck, then you have much bigger problems in the relationship. And most beta males have no awareness of this at all. Well, you know, to the, to the people who would criticize what you say, I mean, first off, women are, women are attracted to men who desire them, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like women are very, very much turned on by desire. And a lot of the seduction um, and even the manosphere has kind of gotten that twisted mm -hmm. because everything, you know, they, it, it's, it's become like even, even pickup. I mean, you can kind of see how things slid down the way they did in some elements of the manosphere because even pickup was really about making yourself 
desirable to a woman in many ways. Which is um, itself very feminine behavior, fitting, right, you know, right. form-fitting, like a vagina. Which is interesting why, you know, not to get into too much in the history of that stuff, but how it, it sort of evolved in cities, which were more feminine environments. So it was a way of men getting laid in feminine environments, right? Mm. Um, at any rate, though, so what you have with within a, a relationship, I mean, at that point, a woman is interested in you, is what she would be in the relationship, presumably, right? Mm -hmm. So your desire for her is arousing to her. Even yeah. if she doesn't come every time, it's very psychologically arousing for her to have that happen. She um, needs to know that you're attracted to her, that you're aroused yes. by her. Yes. Yeah. And so the reason, so in, so I think that what you're saying is com is completely correct. Like, they, you should have sex as much as the, the man wants to have sex. But here's a caveat. Here's a caveat. And I think this may be something that a lot of the listeners on the, on the fence get value out of. A lot of men want to have sex more, not because they actually want to have sex more, but because it's a matter of ego and validation for them. Mm. And so if a guy is trying to sort of take back his balls and take back his agency that, you know, he's a guy who deserves to have sex. If he listens to stuff in the manosphere and you hear some guys talk about how like, yeah, I get, you know, sex every day, or we have, you should be having sex twice a day. And so he thinks to himself, he's like, I'm not alpha unless I have that. Clarity point. I don't, uh, my opinion on the prescription of like n n quantity, like this is, it has to be literally whatever you want. If that's, yeah. if you fuck twice a week and that's all you want, then that's good. If you yeah. want to fuck every day or twice a day, that's up to you too. And to me, there's no, the difference between these uh, numerically is big, but psychologically and for the health of the relationship doesn't matter for the, for the most part. There within reason, extreme, yeah. Within, within reason. reason. Yeah. yeah it, it really is like whatever you want needs to go. And if that's every day, good. If it's once a week, that's up to you, bro. You know, especially yeah, so, if you're old, like whatever. So, so guys need to really be clear about how much do they want to have sex. And I, so yeah. I talk in that newsletter, I, a lot of it is about tapping more into the actual energy within the relationship. What's the sort of dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys are connected, how much you, you want to try to connect with her more and more. Um, I don't mean that in like a, you know, like share your emotions kind of thing. I just mean connect, like be with each other, be with the energy, have there be. <laughs> Get this. <scared. laughs> Look at his avatar. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Lego of a, oh my a God. samurai with a gun. God, I don't that's know. So, that's so funny. I love it. I love so, it. <laughs> so fucking funny. Um, hmm. So a guy has to get in touch with that actual if you get in, in touch with the sexual flow in the relationship, then you want to be having sex based on what that energetic dynamic between the two of you is, you know, I don't want to overcomplicate this. It basically ends up being what Anthony's talking about, how much you want to have sex. You're turned on by her. You want to fuck her, but you guys have sexual tensions between the two of when you do it. It's not that you're approaching sex from your head where you're like, Oh, like we didn't have sex in two days. I have to have sex today. Otherwise I'm a beta. You know, so then you try to force it. And what happens yeah. is that it gets all disjointed. Yep. And that is actually why a lot of women, when they hear this at first br brush, like, oh, you know, you want to, you're just trying to dom, you know, be domineering with the woman. That woman is imagining this guy who's using his ego, yeah. using her as a sexual object for his ego rather than a sexual object for his genuine desire. Yes. So that is the the big quick, critical distinction here. Bingo. It, you do it whenever you want because of the desire. It's want is desire. Yes. And this is it's it's accurate to your wants and desires. And she has to submit to that. Yes. And that makes her happy and it makes a good relationship. If yes. she ends up desperate and horny all the time, well, whatever. <laughs> well, 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 look, you know, the, I like I like kind of teasing and torturing women within reason. Yeah, no, no, I know. And that, and that, yeah. and that's good. I think it's, it's good within reason, you know, cause yeah. that actually amps up the tension. Exactly. Um, exactly. But women who don't want that, I mean, very often it's because like they actually do want the connection, but it's a defense mechanism on their part. Yeah. And so you have to de like, once a woman realizes it's a defense mechanism, like her not laying yeah. herself receive, it's almost like her rejecting your desire. Well, she's never had it before either woman like that. They, right. this is, that's part of the reason I think any girl who, who bitches about this kind of stuff, it's like, you've never had like really good sex and a really good relationship. Like you don't, 
you don't know. Yeah. They have no experience with it. Yeah. yeah. And and I do also think that some women, there's like a self-esteem element, like they won't allow themselves to yeah. receive that, that, and they have to clear out that shame that they actually do deserve to have it. And, yeah. and that's something that a lot of women consciously will deny. But if once they get really honest with themselves, they're like, wait a minute, all of this connection and intimacy I said I wanted, now I'm, I, I get if I just drop this, like, I don't have to have sex. I don't have to have sex, you know, kind of thing. It's like, actually, yeah. I wanted to have sex. What the fuck was, what was I doing? Yeah. You know? And so that's a big shift. I will just make this little last comment, though, and I said this in the, in the newsletter. Um, I, do, I do think that if you're, a, you know, a young man, like there's a calibration based on your age on mm -hmm. how much on a health level you should be having sex. Like, and I, and I think that while we can talk about this, oh, well, you know, you don't have to, maybe you only have to have it twice a week. Okay, fine. But when you start to get beyond like every other week in particular, I mean, at that point, you can say you have a like, no, well, the marriage is really is good, right? Uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's probably you guys care about each other, but you're not stimulating sexual tension. There's you're letting desire kind of collapse and you're um, you're too much on the comfort side. There's not enough. Slowly, like, slowly. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and over time, that will start to atrophy the relationship itself. Yep. So Bingo. There Agreed. is there is a minimum like it doesn't have to be twice a day. It could be twice a week versus twice a day. But um, if you're not doing it at least twice a month, I think you're you're really I, I personally think, you know, yeah, once a week is really what minimum what minimum. minimum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but The bare minimum. Yeah. And I think even at, at at those kind of levels too, like you're talking about these guys making excuses for like these low, these low sex relationships. At that point, I would start to think like your nutrition, your diet, you need to get your T levels checked. You need to get your, get like a typical like blood work done because at that point I would, I would actually worry about your physical health yeah, I agree too. causing relationship problems. And you're just, you're like, Oh no, we're totally cool. It's like, no, your, your balls are shrinking up, bro, because you eat fucking wheat and soy all day. Mm -hmm. And then you're just making excuses for not banging your chick more than once a month or something. 100 percent 100 percent so yeah i think sex is fucking fantastic uh, i'm glad we can talk about it openly and that's how i know you're like a legit dude one of the ways if, you, if i've been thinking lately about how to spot frauds better to teach people how to spot frauds better and if you notice like all these manosphere frauds i think you'll agree with this but let me know uh basically they never talk about sex in any practical technical or even fundamental way they never talk about uh, anything with kissing sucking biting making mm -hmm. out uh, they have no, almost no awareness of any of this because they don't do it. Yeah. If they are, if they are getting laid even a little bit by paying for it and, you know, Harvey Weinstein kind of tactics and whatnot, like we see now sometimes with these frauds, uh, it's very beta sex. Like it's not fun. It's not exciting. It's not masculine. There's no tension to it. Yeah. It's like the lamest of the lame. And that's what I think these, the sheep, the blind leading the blind, this is another element of it is that, look, these guys, they don't talk about fucking women like in any meaningful way, because they really don't either. They're literally not, or they're not fucking them in any way that can be, uh, that they can then instruct you or even talk about it openly. And that's why they don't, because they have no fucking idea. The sharp yeah. mamas and the fraud fathers and all this shit. Like, can you imagine Roel Tomasi banging his wife? Like, you gotta be kidding me. Like it's, it's going to give you nightmares, but that doesn't really happen <laughs> because, yeah. because he's a beta male and she runs his ass. The same is true with the sharp mama. The same is true with the fake and frauds. And on, and they're, they're Rihanna Stones. Like, can you imagine Rihanna Stone, like, you know, banging his wife really hard and having a great time? You don't want to. I understand. Believe me, I really get it. But the reality is that doesn't really happen because he's a beta male. He's a well, beta male LARPing as an alpha male on the internet to other beta males. It's sick. You can see what happens is that they, they don't have sex. And then there's a point of internal tension where he, he starts to have his ego kind of hurt about it. And then, then so he'll try to make a move for it. And then he's going to get rejected. She's not going to be in the mood. And then he's going to throw a tantrum. And like, you know, that that's what's what's that happens all the time with these guys yeah. yep. that, you know, it's like, what the fuck? You know, they get really angry and yeah. which is a very common um, faux alpha thing. Yeah. Yep. Right. Where they just emote and, you know, emotionally lash out like they're like a little boy who didn't yep. get didn't get his you know dessert um uh tate tate says it well oh they didn't they, they want to stick their pee pee in this girl and she doesn't let them yeah. i think he literally says pee pee he's like even stick your pee pee in her yeah and that, yeah. but then they get mad they get these little temper tantrums that's i think you said temper tantrum yeah yeah and then and then 
you know, maybe the girl then just like says, okay, fine. And like has sex, maybe, you know, but, yeah. but, and yeah. then, you know, she, she agrees to give him a blow job. And then suddenly there's like a, a new YouTube video about how alpha he is. He got a blow job, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 For sure. That's, that's exactly how, it happens. how it happens. Yeah. I love this guy on Twitter. You probably know him, Rivolino, the artist. Yeah, Rivolino, yeah. The, the Green Lines guy. I love that guy. Yeah, yeah. But, but he talks a lot about face fucking women. And you need to face fuck your woman all the time or whatever. And I think whether you do that or not, uh, I think men should. I think it's fucking fantastic. But that to me, I'm like, okay, this guy gets laid. Because if you notice one topic, all these frauds never, ever, 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 ever talk about is face fucking a woman. Yeah. And this guy does all the time. He loves it. It's part of what it is. His gimmick to uh I mean, he's not a fraud or anything i think but his ability to troll people is just part of the part of the game and i think it's yeah. i think it's wonderful but it's actually real too and beta males do not face fuck women 100 percent. yeah in my opinion yeah. no i think i think you're i think you're right and look i you know rivolino he's a smart guy and he's and he's aware of the caricatured nature of things right yeah we're talking about like the green lines to an extreme the face fucking to an extreme no. um but i actually think that there's a, there's a really value in it for a lot yeah, of dudes yeah. because you uh, like, look, I, I'll be straightforward. I mean, I, I love getting head. Right. But I, I also love going down. Like I don't, I'm, I enjoy it. You know, that's, that's anti riv sort of thing. Uh, right. Whatever. But, but no, but the thing is like the point here, you want to get to the point where you're doing whatever you want. Right. And I don't think it's bad to, go and you know you want to give a girl pleasure i don't think it's it's a bad thing to say okay i want to do this right yeah. but a lot of guys and this is because of all this sort of programming that has basically turned guys into like pete davidson's right who are basically you know you're really just a bitch with a penis and she you know and and she does what you you just please her sexually and that's your only job Right. That's like the best sexual thing for a guy to get under this sort of paradigm that they've created for us. And so what you see is that guys, when it comes to sex, their their anxiety, which causes actually performance issues, yeah. is entirely oriented around trying to sexually please their wo this woman. Right. Yep. And if they can't do it, then they're not a man. She's not going to want to be with them. And I swear to God, Anthony, I mean, one of the, th one of the things like, and it's also because of porn and stuff like that, that guys have this fantasy that the girl just really, really wants them and she's going to be so turned on and she's going to, you know, come and even she's going to initiate in many cases. And then guys have this program in their mind and they wonder why when the situation happens that they can't get it up. I mean, yeah. look, it's nice when, you know, time to time when a girl initiates, initiates. But the reality is that as a man, you're sexually charged when you yep. are, you're pursuing, right? You're taking the girl. She's yours. She's, you know, to even put it in, in these very basic terms, it's like, you know, you take her and you're, you're fucking her, right? You're in attack mode. You're in attack mode. You're in attack mode. You're going to attack her, attack her vagina. Yeah, exactly. You, <laughs> it charges your masculinity. Like you're a, yep. you're a predator, right? You're yeah. a predator. When the woman comes after you, you're you're the prey, and so you become yeah. powerless, right? Which is impotence. Yeah. So guys can't get it up, but then you know this whole thing is about the girl coming to them, the girl validating them. Well, yeah, it's they, just, but they're just wounded and broken. Like it's all it's all just rationalizing their own fucking trauma is what it is. Yeah, they should. They should be. If I can, you know, interpret what you're saying, they need to be egg predators. Prey on, <laughs> be a predator for the eggs. Get the well, eggs. Well, yeah, and and look, I think once a guy gets used to saying, you know what, I'm gonna go in. Like my objective here is the fuck is to like get my like please myself. Really, that's what it's about. It's about pleasing myself. Yeah. What they find is that the girl really enjoys that. Yeah. And then once you have that mindset solidified then there can be much more dynamism in the dynamic. So it's like, well, you're going after what you want, but now, you know, but, but now you can go and please her because now going and pleasing her is what you want. You're solidified now in pleasing yourself on a fundamental 
strat strategic orientation that tactically you can go down on her tactically, you know, like, so there's, there's a you lot. You can do whatever the fuck you want, you pretty much, because you you're because in you command. The fundamental orientation, correct. Yeah. Yep. But, you know, what you really want from women sexually is you, like when we talk about, oh, I want the woman to initiate. It's like, you don't really want her to initiate. What you want is her to indicate receptiveness. Yeah. That's what you want. Yep. That's when you get charged where it's like she's wearing something skimpy and she sticks her ass out. Yeah. That's what you want because then it's like invitation to attack. Well, as a that. man, you, you want to feel desired too. And I think the manosphere is a big hang up with this, particularly the red pill frauds. Mm -hmm. They and maybe probably some of the MGTOW and the black pill guys too. I heard, for example, you called them retards on Tony's show the other day, which well, I, yeah, love. I love. It. I love it. I, I love it. I, I was and I was talking to them from a position of familiarity as yeah, well, and yeah. they were trolling me in the comments and stuff like that. So, but before we lose the point, like you know, whether it's red pill, roller pill, black pill, MGTOW, whatever the fuck, even the MRAs, right? They don't want to talk about it, but they want to be desired by women. This is mm -hmm. very natural. Every man wants to be desired by if not woman in plural, then at least one woman in particular that you're also attracted to. Yeah. And these guys can't admit that they have a need to be desired. Yeah. It's like, oh no, that's needy. It's like, no, dude, you're just a human being and you're a man and you have balls and yeah. you want a woman to suck and fuck you and have a good yeah. time. Like this yeah. is not fucking complicated, but they overcomplicate it to this insane level of, you know, the keyboard warrior shit and the hypergamy and the fucking never, never let a woman know you want her back in the old POA days. Like it, there's just, as, as positive and productive as the manosphere has been, there's also been this, this mountain of like fuckery and bullshit. not in bullshit, not even the fraudulent shit, which is a whole nother fucking mountain of shit. Yeah. Just like this, this fuckery and insecurity and the stupidity and the blind leading the blind. <laughs> and sex, I think, is one of the most profound areas that there's just been a lot of retard shit. Guys like you and Alan Roger Curry and even like a Tony Bruno are the exceptions to the rule. But it's just the blind leading the blind who don't know shit can't fuck women, don't get laid, can't admit that they want women to want them. Like, like I love, I'm mouth as fuck. I love it. I'm pure blood. Women yep. want to bang me. They're, you know, all this shit. I want to enslave all women, whatever, right? It's fucking great. <laughs> but, but at least I can, at least I'm comfortable with it and I can admit it. And, you know, my girlfriend loves it hundred percent. Duh. Otherwise I wouldn't be in a relationship with her. Right. Yep. So I really appreciate that guys like you speak up and uh, you talk about these issues on a regular basis too, right? I do what I can to support it, but you know, seeing the newsletter and stuff, Pat Stebman's talking about sex, better open that shit. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, Anthony. And, and I appreciate what you're doing. I mean, really, you you are the nexus of all of this stuff, all these conversations and and you keep it coherent. Thanks. You know, it, it, it does pull the the focus of it in this direction you know you you kind of cleave off okay like this is this is outside of the bounds of what we should define as as productive right yeah. and cleave off this area you know you you know declare a jihad on it right <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta call the herd you gotta clean up the manosphere you know yeah do, yeah. do what it takes jihad exactly it's a yeah. it's a it's a holy war of masculinity and femininity even uh, you know, even reaching out, you know, I'm, I'm like one of the pioneers in the manosphere for Make Women Great Again, obviously mm -hmm. organizing a bunch of speakers like yourself and myself and many others to actually talk to women and teach them mansplain yep. what men want and how feminism has lied to them. Like these are for them, from a manosphere perspective, this is not that complicated. Like this needs to happen. And yet even not only from the feminists that they get pushed back, but even in the manosphere, a lot of the roller pill guys and red pill guys and MGTOW guys, even they hated it. I mean, a lot of guys loved it too. They loved the 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 balls of it, the tenacity. The it, it was hilarious, like yeah. watching the media freak out, <laughs> puppeting puppeting the fake news, right? Yeah, or flipping the tables. But it needed to happen. And it's like, what do you? Women are women. The manosphere can agree that the state of American woman is a disaster. I think, right? Worse than it's ever been by a long shot, particularly the past 10, 15, 20 years, right? Uh, yeah, I would even, have... yeah, I mean, no question. It, 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 it's getting exponentially worse. Every yeah. Year. I yeah. mean, what 10 years ago, yeah. like you had messed up women, but but you had still like fundamentally, I would not say that your average woman was insane. Like now, now it's really yeah. gotten to be quite. Yeah, how I mean, many, it's... how many hundreds of thousands or millions of American college women are literally selling their vagina on seeking arrangements or even on Tinder. Oh, Venmo me five bucks and see what happens. Like 
Like yeah. these girls are the average American girl. AJ Cortez actually put it really good in his 2019 Poland speech. You've always had a population of women who are just like degenerate sluts and prostitutes and strippers, whatever. And I, I think don't know, you need it, to be honest, I think you need it in a society. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Like it's yeah. fun. It's that that behavior has reached the entire rest of the bell curve. Like right. what was once a minority has now become normal across at least 60% of the population and, or 80% in some major way. And it's like, this is not, this is completely unsustainable and we're all going to die if this doesn't stop. Like it's that bad. Yeah. I mean, I'll have to jump in in a minute because I have a, I have a coaching okay. call, but um, I just want to respond real quick to that. One of the things that I've observed is you know, there is, there are always these women, you know, call them the Madonnas, right. Who are just not super, super promiscuous or sexual by their very nature. And then you have this certain percentage of women. And I think it's 10 to 20% on each end, yeah. um, to varying degrees who are just, you know, totally promiscuous. And um, frankly, you know, I actually am not anti these girls. I think that they have, well, first off, they are who they are, right? Whatever. Same, same. But, but, at, but they also, if we're being honest here, they've kind of served a bit of a purpose in the sense that, you know, there's always that one girl in high school who, you know, 10 guys got their first experience with as a result. You know what I mean? It's kind yeah. of, in some ways, there's an ecosystem to it at, that, the other other women don't have to sort of play that role and the guys are maybe more than inclined to go with the with the good girls At, to your point though um it's you have always this malleable middle 60 to 80 percent of women who are to varying degrees maybe slightly more promiscuous slightly less but fundamentally they're they're based on the mores of society and the slut has been normalized by society right now. And so all these girls, even if they're not super inclined to want to do it in a different time period, they would never have done it. You know, they go to college and they're going to mm -hmm. have some hookups because that's what everybody else is doing. And I'm of the opinion that a lot of those girls are salvageable, but it's getting harder and harder as time goes on, because yeah. it just depends on the number of stuff. And we're not even talking about, you know, just the fact that a lot of them are in terrible shape. You can't undo it. You can't undo history. You can't undo banging 40 guys. Like, no, I mean, and that's a huge number, right? I'm, I'm not even talking anything closely, close to that. Um, but the, the, the issue is that are these girls, if, if a girl is actually stepping out of that, there needs to be some serious, serious self-awareness and reflection. I do see more women doing this. I have to say that. I do see more women coming to terms with it. Um, mm. And while I, I don't think that you should ever, on a blanket level, just simply accept that a woman's changed, I think it's constructive to see that you have women who are, I, I'm not saying it's the norm yet, but you do have some women who are, who are legitimately becoming more of like, look, this was degenerate shit. I was manipulated into. I don't want it anymore. I don't want to be a part of it. And to their credit, they're open with guys about their past because they understand like they're, and, and that's not the average woman by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, I'm talking more about a trend I see growing where men and women, because let's like, I want to be also a little bit fair to some of these girls. Like they are being like, you're, you know, you're 18 years old. And you've been fed this shit all the way throughout your life. You haven't had any father to, to or mother, frankly, to yep. women are more policed by women, by other women than by men at the end of the day. To, Slut shaming. Yeah. yeah to, to, to teach them not to look like a harlot, right? Yeah. Or, to, or to engage in this behavior. Um, everybody's having to pick up the pieces and put it back together again. And so while I urge and, you know, men need to be discerning, they need to understand the woman they're with. I do think it's reasonable to have compassion, if especially if you yourself have thrown some stones. You're, you know, if you've been in a glass house yourself in terms of some of your own behavior. Yeah. Um, Knock on wood for me. I do agree with you. I just uh, my only caveat would be I agree with you like sincerely in a large part. My only caveat is if, if these women really want to own their mistakes and these things and come clean, that's good. But where is the action in terms of saying? What, who are they going to settle for? And the reality yeah. is they want to bang all these guys 
okay, they've escalated now to the next stage of consciousness, as you might put it. They're yeah. owning, they're taking responsibility, but they don't want to let that pan out to you're kind of get you're going to get a masculine beta male at best. Some guy who's legit alpha is probably not going to wipe you up. Why would he? Mm -hmm. Like you, you've made real mistakes and those mistakes have consequences. And that's where I'm not, I'm not seeing that yet. That kind of like, look, you're, you don't deserve that great of a guy because this is your history and it's pretty bad. Yeah. You know I mean? And, and, and I'd, I'd also just say that these women, one of the things you always got to look for is how long have they been celibate since that period? Yeah, like if, yeah. If if a woman like was fucking all over the place and then three months later she's like, okay, I'm not doing that. like I've been celibate for three months. <laughs> okay, like let's give it three years and let's you know yeah. see where you're at because um, there hasn't been a real genuine shift, perhaps. But anyway, I, I really do have to go. Um, Thank you so much, Pat, for your time. Hundred percent. I appreciate it as always, Anthony. I look forward to it, and uh, cool. You know, we'll speak next time. One hundred percent. Thank you, Pat. I'll all close right. out the show, and I'll see you next time. All right, see you. Those of you watching, uh, still will tune in here over two, almost three hours of showing today. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Please hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment, like a regular comment, not just a chat. Regular comments help the videos go viral. Share it on your Twitter account, Facebook with friends over WhatsApp, you know, chat, text, whatever. I appreciate it. So is Pat, the speaker. Um, he'll benefit. The channels will benefit. Men will benefit. Women will benefit. Uh, whether they're you know virgins or skankaroos or anything in between, Super Saiyan skank, for example. They need to hear this kind of content. They need the truth. And uh, it's one of the few channels in the manosphere in the world, let's say, putting out real content with real ideas and real truth, man. Uh, do check out Pat Stedman's website. That's patstedman.com. He has coaching. He has a blog. He has a master class. It's a video, of course. It's pretty cool. And uh, check that out. Uh, he was, unfortunately, arrested by the FBI last year, and he's still facing uh, you know, prosecution for that. My opinion is completely fraudulent bullshit. They need to drop that against him and everyone else uh, involved with that. Or 99%. I'm sure there's some douchebag somewhere that deserves uh, some time. But 99% of it is just fake fake news garbage. Uh, so do check him out. Um, support him. He's got a kid to support, a wife, uh, all kind of cool stuff. And support 21 Studios. Go to 21studios.com. Check out our events, 21 University, the store. Get your hats. They're for alpha males only. Beta males do not buy the hats. Uh, it doesn't work that way. You got to be alpha male with a hat. All kinds of cool hats. And with that said, I appreciate you guys' time. Peace out. I'll see you next time, episode 161 of the Red Man Group.